Good morning, LBC Radio. My name is Corey Rosen, and you're listening to The Story Podcast. Today, I have on a super awesome guest, but before that, we have some merchandise. If you'd like to buy some stickers, you can grab some stickers. And we have a hoodie coming out with the logo on the front and the first 50 guests on the back. And that includes today's guest, Alyssa Crook. Alyssa got her start in the EPAC Kids for Kids production, The Jungle Book, as Ka the Snake at the early age of eight. So you could say she caught the bug early on. She grew up performing on the stages of EPAC, Rainbow Dinner Theater, American Music Theater, and the Dutch Apple. Recently graduated from Muhlenberg College with a double major in theater and English. Al- Alyssa is currently working the season in the new entertainment department at the Strasbourg Railroad in various roles, including that of the company's fight captain. You can find Alyssa and her work at on her Instagram at underscore Alyssa Crook. That's C R O O K underscore. And you can find her at a website, Alyssa Crook Talent.com. Alyssa, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I nailed those pronunciations. You did. You got them perfectly. I don't know what you were worried about. Oh, well, it, you see, it's just, it's just a talent of mine. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It is not absolutely. <laughs> Anyone, any any guest that's come on here before was like, shut up. <laughs> you struggled so. I struggled. Uh, there was uh, anyone who has like a bunch of names to list out. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Just names after names. Names after names. And it's like all the pronunciations you would never ever think of. Like yeah. we, we had this conversation about Strasbourg or Strasbourg. Yeah. Uh, everyone calls it. You know, people in Lancaster get get riled up when people say Lancaster Esther instead of Lancaster. Yeah, right. And that, it, but it's Strasburg instead of Strasburg. Yeah, it's that Pennsylvania Dutchy, Pennsylvania Dutchy thing. Yeah, that's so interesting. So, what got you inspired to do music? You you were in the Kids for Kids program at age eight. What what was it for you that got you inspired into to musical theater? So, the very I think the very first thing was. Oh, gosh. I was four. I went to see The Nutcracker, the, the ballet, Nutcracker. Tchaikovsky yeah. piece. Um, and I looked at my mom, and I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> so she put me in dance classes, and I did The Nutcracker. So from very early on, I was just constantly with the music and movement. That's just always been part of my mm. life. And then a dance teacher I had was like, you should, you should maybe – do this. So she told me to audition for The Jungle Book, and I did. And I just, from that moment, I was like, okay, yeah, this is this is it. This is the thing. Yeah, that's awesome. So what was it like to dance as, like, a, a four or five-year-old? Probably not good. Probably. <laughs> but, yeah. Good enough for them to say, you can do this. Exactly. Good enough for them to be like, you can walk on stage, carry this. I was an angel in the Nutcracker. Oh. So... Carried a little LED candle on stage, and then I did a little twirl and I walked off stage. And that so, was uh, that no. was your extent. <laughs> That's the extent of my four-year-old performing experience. This was I've seen in Nutcracker. They they do some insane things in the Nutcracker. Yes, they do. And have you ever uh, done any of those more insane things? Um, I did the. He has his own studio now, Victor Yellowen. Mm. He's a ballet teacher in the area, um, but before. It was his studio. It was the Lancaster School of Ballet, and he would choreograph the Nutcracker for them every Christmas. Mm-hmm. So I did it until I was like 12 or 13. So I did everything in that mus- that, that ballet you can that isn't on point. <laughs> it isn't on point. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I did it all. And for those who don't know, on point is when you're on like your tiptoes, right? Yes. Yeah. I have... The excruciating, hard thing. They, so... I, I struck a nerve. I could tell. Not to throw anyone under the bus. I don't know. <laughs> but um, when I started Point at Lancaster School of Ballet, they wanted us to soak our feet in pickling spice to toughen them. I didn't do that. <laughs> but they expected some insane things for you to do to your body in order to do it. And I have very weak ankles. Mm. So I did it for like two years. And then I sprained my ankle pretty badly. And I was like, yeah, we're done. We're done. Yeah, I'm sure on point isn't for everybody. No. No. I th- I see some of, I see some of the, the dances the dancers and they're like it looks uncomfortable. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it gets to a point where you kind of can just like do it. Yeah, ignore the pain, 
but then you're done and then you take them off and you're like, oh, ow. Oh, ow. <laughs> oh, that oh, hurts. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. That's <laughs> pain. It was like me walking around. Did you go have a good Roots and Blues this past weekend? I did not. Oh, my gosh. You missed out. Uh, for those who don't know, Roots and Blues is one of, is one of the coolest. Uh, now I can officially say it because I played at Roots and Blues. Oh, okay. Uh, not really. I just went on an, a jam session, so I technically played with Technically, technically. You played there? I did, I did, I did. It counts? It counts. <clears throat> but, uh, so it's this uh, weekend, this past weekend, uh, Friday to Sunday, um, a little bit of Friday, but not all of Friday, but it's, it's, uh, it's performances all around the city, so TELUS, the Holiday Inn, the Marriott, uh, the Convention Center, uh, the Village, and I th- the Elks Lodge was also there, and Zotropolis was also a part of it. There's performances going on all day at all of these different ven- venues. And it's all based on, like, roots and, like, blues. So it's, like, all festival, all uh, folk music, all, uh, like, jazz, blues, all city-wide. So there's, like, big brass bands, and there's, like, like there's trumpets and sousaphones everywhere. And, yeah, yeah, it That's was... so cool. It was amazing. And uh, I, I <laughs> doing this podcast, I wanted to hit every single one of them. So I'm <laughs> sat here trying to figure out, okay, how can I catch the end part of every single set Ever here? <laughs> how can I clone myself? How can exactly? <laughs> how can I be at multiple places at once and grab grab the uh, cards of every single person here? Who's there? So, I, well, because most of them are local, okay. so they're like local enough to draw in a big crowd, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, then you got your big names, which I would also like to have on. Of course. Um. So I ha- I was busy all weekend running around all the all the different places. And oh my gosh, am I realize how unfit I am? <laughs> that nothing will get you like when you're in the moment and you're like, I gotta go, I gotta. Ooh. Why am I windy? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and not to mention it's like eighty something degrees outside, and I'm like, why am I so? Oh, that's why. That's why. It, was, it was so hot this weekend. It was it was really hot. Um, most people, it's I, whoever likes the eighty degree weather, you're you're insane. Just want to point that out. Yeah. No. It. No, especially with the humidity around here. It's oppressive. It, it is. It's oppressive. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> it is. You're right. It, 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 oh, my goodness. Anyway, back to your career. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can talk about the oppressive, oppressiveness of Lancaster heat more. Well, listen, it's, it's, it's only goes so far. That's true. Because then we, then we have to talk about the oppressiveness of the cold as well. That is true. It gets rigid. But I ra- I'd rather the cold than the heat any day. Yeah, I'd rather put more layers on. Because there's so, only so much you can take off. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and that's socially acceptable. Also true. <laughs> so, uh, um, growing up, you did Ka. What was that uh, like for you? That's like a lead role in the Jungle Book, isn't it? Yes. It's, he's like the, because, not the Gira, that's the Panther. Shere Khan Shere is the Khan, main yeah. bad guy, right. that tiger. But then Ka's like a little henchman sidekick. Yeah, because he he's he's a bigger character in the musical than he is in the in the like movie, right? Eh. eh. Not really. Oh, then I he, like, I am mistaken. He like comes on, sings his little hypnosis song, and then, and then is, out. is done. Oh, but so like, it is like the like the book. Yeah. Okay. But like I got thrown into a bunch of like group numbers. They're like, sure, let's put a snake in here. <laughs> Let's put a snake in there. What was the costume like? So it was eight girls. Eight. Yep, eight of us. Or was it? I think it was eight. Was it six? There was a lot of young girls, and we all had black leotards with like skate snake skin fabric, like draped over us, and then we all had hula hoops that we looped around each other to make like segments. Gotcha. So when we moved, it was like we were all connected like a snake. That seems. Very coordinated for young people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then we had to do choreography with the hula hoops, and it never it never timed out. Like, we'd do, like, jump rope with the hula hoops, and somebody was always behind someone else. Does anybody ever trip and fall on stage? So, at the end of the number, we all put our hula hoops around the kid that was playing Mowgli, mm. and we would pretend to, like, pull like we were constricting him. Yeah. And there was one day we got him so low on his legs, we lifted him up, and then he fell. <laughs> the poor kid. 
<laughs> and of course, the adult in the room was like, no, 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 no. We can't do that again. Right. But yeah, we just, we pulled to everybody just in different directions. Went, hoo, hoo. And he just, he lifted off the <laughs> ground. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those moments in the moment, you're like, <gasps> but now you're looking back at it. That was hilarious. Yeah, in hindsight, it's so funny. You know, as an eight-year-old, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh, yeah, right, right, right. Like, oops. Oops. That wasn't me. It was the other seven girls. It was, it was girls. the other seven <laughs> girls. It wasn't me. I'm the lead here. Yeah, I'm, unfortunately, it was not my, not unfortunately, fortunately, it was not my. <laughs> she like, unfortunately, I didn't do it. Yes, unfortunately. If I had, it would have been worse. If I had, you would know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your uh, movement from there? From there, I did I did EPAC's Kids for Kids almost every Christmas until I was 14, 15. So I did, like, Susicle and mm. Beauty and the Beast and... Bugsy Malone, that was a fun show. What's Bugsy Malone about? It's about, so the kids' version is different than, like, Obviously. actual Bugsy Malone. Right. Yeah. Um, so Bugsy Malone is a gangster, yeah, who gets involved, like, he falls in love with this girl who's, like, a jazz singer in a club. Um, I played a flapper in mm -hmm. the club, so I just, you know, got to have, it was very good music. Like I'm sure. It's a good show, but, yeah, instead of the bad guy selling guns, he makes pies. He makes pies and sells pies? Yeah, and everybody, when they, we would have fights, everybody would shoot each other with silly string instead of weapons. I mean, that's fun. It was fun. I'm sure a lot of very chaotic. It was very chaotic. A hard to stay in character. Eh. eh. I was so young, there was no character. Put your hands up. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh That's fun. It was, it was really fun. Have you ever seen the the actual like version of the show? No? Nope. Nope. Because <laughs> I don't want it soiled. For me, it's right, just about it's for, gangsters yeah. selling pies. That, that, is, that is a dream, isn't it? It's such a dream. I want to be a gangster selling pies. Selling a pie. Pies. It's honestly life goals to be right, a gangster it's, selling, it's selling pies. pies. It's like, it's like Albert, Albert Costello. Hey! You want some pie? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, <clears throat> did you go into high school and start doing uh, theater as well? I did. So, um, I did. Was that my freshman year of high school? My freshman year of high school, I only did our play. Mm. Because I was doing Beauty and the Beast at EPAC during our musical. And then... The following three years, I did all the shows. So okay. Our musicals were All Shook Up, which is all Elvis Presley music. Oh, okay. Which was phenomenal. And now I'm a big fan of Elvis because I was put in a situation where I had to was, learn his repertoire. Did you see his movie? I did see his movie. What do you think? I really liked it. Yeah? I yeah. haven't seen it yet. I like Boz Lerman as just a filmmaker. So, and... I love teen heartthrob Austin Butler, mm. so I was very excited to see the movie. And then, first of all, his singing is impeccable. Yeah, like for a, for the briefest of moments, I was like, oh, so they just they're just dubbing Elvis, songs, Elvis yeah. over him. And then I realized I was like, oh no no no, he's singing, and the impression is very good. Wow. Yeah, I was, and his singing is also very good. That's what I thought when I saw Elton John. When it's uh. <gasps> Oh, what's oh, what his, was his name? Yeah, I know, I know. What's his name? Tor it's not Tor Terrence. Wells. Terrence. Terrence something, yeah. Terrence. Eggy is the only thing in my head from Kingsman. Right, well, <laughs> But it's not his name. He's, he's like the gorilla from Sam. <laughs> <That's, that's, laughs> yeah. You know, that's how we got the gig at Alan John. Really? Uh, yeah, he. that's in, uh, that's that's how he got the gig to be Alan John in the movie. Was from that performance on Sing. As the gorilla? As the gorilla. Singing I'm, or uh, whatever song Elton Johnny sang. Uh, it was I'm Still Standing, I think. He yeah, sang? it was yeah. I'm Still Standing. Uh, and, and, and Sing, that's how he got. And he went on tour with Elton John and, start, and did duets with him. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I love that. I know. 
I, I just love Elton John. That's I'm I'm a gigantic fan geek over him. Yeah. But uh, that's so that's Elvis Presley, right? Al Shook up. Yeah. That's it, is it basically like a a life story of him as, as well or no? So it's actually the Shakespeare show Twelfth Night. Oh. Adapted with Elvis music. <laughs> It sounds it sounds nonsensical. I understand. It's, it's, you're telling me uh, it's it's kind of like like West Side Story where it's like the Romeo and Juliet put in the modern day. Yes, so it's like set in this little small town, and this girl Natalie's a mechanic, and this roving roustabout named Chad rolls into town. Of course, his name is Chad. His name is of course his name is Chad. And everybody in town is like, oh, my gosh, Chad's so cute. We love Chad. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, the show starts with, with Jailhouse Rock. He gets out of prison. He's like, I'm going. Um, it's kind of like Bye Bye Birdie, almost. It's very Bye Bye Birdie. Yeah. And then he comes into town. He's like, come on, everybody. Let's dance. Let's have fun. Um, it's also like Footloose. <laughs> it's also, well, my character was the mayor, and I was like, nobody can dance. You're all. <laughs> so it's Bye Bye Birdie and Footloose. And Footloose. Together. together, yeah. Oh my gosh! I was like, no one can dance. This is terrible. You're all depraved, um, and so everybody like falls in love with the wrong person, right? Of course. And lead Natalie. She dresses up as a boy to get closer to Chad, and then he's like, he's in love with this one. Char- Chad's in love with this one character, Sandra. But then he's like, do I love Ed, who's Natalie in disguise? <laughs> and so then he's like, I don't know what's happening. Um, and it's it's such a fun show. It's so good. It sounds like a, something I've had to see that one. And if you can listen to the cast recording, the original Broadway cast recording of Can't Help Falling in Love, it's so good. Mm. It's like that song is beautiful. Uh, yes. And then the arrangement they did of it in the show is just chef's kiss. That, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so... Because, you know, I don't like Bye Bye Birdie. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see why say. not. I don't know why anyone would dislike Bye Bye Birdie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It is a lot. But I love Footloose. <laughs> Footloose is great. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'll have to trick up all shrink, shrink up. It's it's fun. And it's again, it's Elvis music. So there's Right, some, exactly. Yeah. But it, that can be a good thing and a bad thing. That is also true. So, you know, <laughs> that I mean, is also true. Um, so, uh, what decide, what made it for you to go to college for, or did you go to college for? I did. did. Yes, you did. Yeah. It, that's right. You double majored in theater and English. Yes. Of all things. You know, I you know. <laughs> to make my parents happy, I needed a, um. A real job. A real degree. A real degree. English, yeah. as someone who has it as a degree, it's not a real degree, but like, it's a real degree, but like. It will get me as much work as my theater degree does. Right, right. Like, I can get jobs that pay me better with my English degree, but it's still like a humanities arts degree. Oh, really? Is it? Mm Mm-hmm. I guess that makes sense. Uh, Tell me what studying English is. (laughs) (laughs) So when I studied the English language, um, it was actually really easy at Muhlenberg. Mm, I think it's like 60% of the student body at Muhlenberg double majors. Oh, wow. So, yeah, they're really good with making sure double majoring is feasible for you. I'll let you know that almost 90% of LBC double majors. There you go. Because we have to get a Bible degree. Oh, well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Fair. But still, no, yeah, that's yeah, a good it's, percentage. It's, uh, yeah, no. Well, because well, the, the 10% only get the Bible degree. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I yeah, understand right. now. <laughs> I was like, how did they... Because it's, 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 it's what it's what you go to. Uh, so I went for music composition. Okay. But I had to do my music major plus the Bible degree. Gotcha. So everyone has to do the Bible degree unless they are doing the biblical studies degree. And then that's and then that's the all only they degree. Uh, that's all they have to do. Okay. So English. English, yes. You, um, English and theater were pretty easy to do together because a lot of my classes would count for both yeah i'm sure like yeah shakespeare and then like you know. exactly yeah i took like a shakespeare reproduced class yeah. and it counted for one of my um i'm forgetting what they called it but one of my like like extra ex- extra classes extra for classes. my theater major and then it counted for my um reproductions modernist requirement for my english degree fair enough yeah so it was i was able to if i planned it 
smartly, which my first two semesters I didn't because I was just like, I want to take class. Yeah. So <laughs> instead of focusing on what I needed for my major, I just right. took what interested me, which was a mistake. And mm-hmm. I do not recommend because my senior year sucked because I was trying to finish my requirements. But yeah, it was. And I went abroad for a semester, which mm. was very nice because. Where'd you go to abroad to? I went to Arezzo, Italy. So a non-English. A non-English speaking <laughs> country. <laughs> Nothing there counted for my English major, which luckily I was able to make work. Mm. I got a lot of my gen eds out of the way in Italy. Smart. Yeah, like I took a philosophy of the arts class, so I got like a humanities requirement out of the way. Mm-hmm. I took Italian, obviously, so I got a language requirement out. I think, as opposed to English. <laughs> as opposed to English, because that doesn't count as your language requirement, apparently. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, it also messed me up because I did Spanish in high school. Oh, yeah, and they're so similar. Those romance languages are not the same, but the same. Yeah, right. So I was like, mm-hmm. I, for the first like two weeks in Italy, I was speaking Spanish to people. And then on fall break, I went to Barcelona, and I was speaking Italy to people. Italy, Italy, Italy. Italian. (laughs) Oh, my God. I was speaking Italian to people. And my friend I was traveling with, she had, because I was like, grazie. And she went, we're in Spain. And I was like, you're right, Sophia. We are in Spain. However. However, I have been speaking Italian for two months. So I'm going to do it to anyone. It's just going to come out. I'm very sorry. Like, I had to consciously, like, before I spoke to people in Spain, I had to be like, stop, Spain. process, speak Spanish. <laughs> it was... That's yeah. incredible that you kept that Spanish in you for a while. I barely. barely. Okay, barely. Like, okay. I, I gotcha. survived in Spain. I didn't thrive. Right, right, right. No, that's exactly how I, how I am. It's like, um, when I ever go to the Walmart and there's, like, Spanish-speaking people there, I'm like, process, bread. Pan. <laughs> style pan. Pan. That's, yeah. Like when we would go to order at restaurants, I'd be like, remember how you do this in Spanish? Conjugate the verbs. Okay, go. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> so what was it? What was some of the biggest culture differences you saw in Spain? Or uh, Italy. In I, Italy? Or Spain. Both. Both are not the U.S. You want to know my biggest problem with the Italian people? They don't put ice in their water. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. I would go to restaurants. First of all, you have to specify which water you want because it's either agua frizzante, which is like bubbly, like carbonated oh, like, water, or agua naturale, way. which is water. Which is water. <laughs> water. <laughs> so you'd have to specify which one you wanted. I made that mistake, and I don't like carbonated beverages. So mm-hmm. I was like, this, I will never make this mistake again. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I was like, there's no ice. <laughs> and every time we go to a restaurant, I'd be like, why is there no ice? And then we all lived, took class in, and, like, ate everything in a one villa. Like, it was just one building. Oh, wow. And, like, I would just get my room temperature water from the faucet and be sad. And be sad. <laughs> but that was... It is probably... That's what's best for the voice, though. It I is. Heard. It is. Unfortunately. Like, okay, if I'm singing, I can consciously make the choice to have room for temperature or warm water. Right. But when I'm just living my life, I want want ice. (laughs) (laughs) I want ice. But, I mean, that's my biggest complaint about Italy. Really? I've heard some really big complaints about how everything is just tiny. Tiny? Like, um, one of my friends, uh, Kaz, he went to Italy and the, the coffees he'd get were, like, just small. Oh, that is true. That is no, that's fair. I didn't I didn't start drinking coffee till my senior year of college. Oh, okay. So I got out of the the coffee. I never problem. I never got into coffee. I started drinking it because I needed it, not because I like it. Fair enough. I haven't hit that low point yet. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I hope you don't get there. Probably will at some point. Maybe. I I probably but well what I, what I figured out is that a cold like a cold bottle of water going to wake me up way faster than any caffeine would ever do. That's fair. That's you know true. I mean? Yeah, it's, it does the same. Yeah. It does the same. It shocks your body. Yeah, it does. Uh, in, in the best way possible, might I add. You know where that can't happen? Where? 
Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the ice? Where's the ice? Just take a dip in the Mediterranean. That's true. I did. So Arezzo's in Tuscany, so it's not on the coast. Right, yeah. But I was able to, because the, pub, sorry. <laughs> The public transport system, it's probably like just the infrastructure, really good. it's phenomenal. Yeah. I could just, well, you had to walk like a mile to get into town from where I was, which I was so physically fit. My calf muscles were insane. But. Doing dancing for so long, yeah. That's also, yeah. But you would just get into town and get on the train and you could go anywhere in Italy. Anywhere in the, in the uh, EU yeah. as well. I took a train from. Paris to London. I went under the ocean. Right. Or the, well, the English Channel, yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> it's the water. It's the, it's the water. <laughs> I went underwater. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, I feel the same way about going, taking the tunnel to uh, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Yes. Like, I went under the ocean. I'm like, I'm underwater. I'm under the, I'm under the sea. Under the sea. <laughs> that, they had this cool little app too on the train that I could download. It was for kids, but I did it. And like it would be like, you're under the English channel. And then it would show you a bunch of different like species of fish and different oh, that's things. Cool though. And yeah, and you could like click on it and it would tell you about it. And it was so cool. That's so cool. It, you know, I really love the fact that museums make stuff for kids, but listen, adults are just big kids. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I just want to be enthralled and entertained. Exactly. I mean, that's that's literally the human experience, is it yeah, not? It is. Is to be enthralled and entertained. That's just at our at our core. That's all we want. It's all we want. Yeah. Sports is just like tag for kids. You know what I mean? Yes. That's actually a really that's a really good analogy. And it, it, I mean, that's what it is. And people get riled up for for sports the same way we get riled up for tags or sharks and minnows as, as like kids. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh my goodness. Like, Pittsburgh Steelers! Or, or whoever. I'm a Steelers fan. I know that upsets a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, I am not. I don't do sports ball. I am I not a fan of any Pennsylvania sports ball. Well, no, I'm a fan of the Phillies, but that's the only Pennsylvania sports ball. <gasps> I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I, I literally. I Because I get so enthralled with sports, I, I've decided, you know what? It's not worth me breaking my entire physique and emotional <laughs> stability over. That's that's healthy. No, it is. I, <laughs> what I, that I can, is is healthy. Well, I know, but people are like, how could you not get I'm like? Listen, I if the if the Steelers are in the Super Bowl, I can't watch the Super Bowl because I will get, or I can't watch any sports because I will pick a side of who I want to win, and then I will get so mad with that they side. didn't win <laughs> with my, my side that I, I voluntarily chose and had no emotional pre- ties no, to no previous emotional ties to I would get so mad that they lost and I'm like there's no point in me ruining my entire day that's no that's really fair right I'm trying to think if and I and I'll lose my voice as well because I, I, I was a drum major in high school so oh. I would I was always always and, you know, going to the football games, you know, you want your high school to win. And you're just like... Ah. So you yell. You yell, and you, then you have to yell at the band as well to get them to get started. Yeah. Uh, and so I just lose my voice every single Friday. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I... No, I feel that. I can't scream. Mm. Like, the second I start yelling, I'm like, oh, there we go. I can project. Projecting... But I, I'd argue projecting is different than yelling. It's so different. Yeah. No, I agree. My... Because, yeah, when I yell... I can, like, feel my vocal feel cords it. just start, like... Itching. Yeah, like, yeah. rubbing. But, like, when you project, it just, it, it just it comes feel, out. It feels healthy. It, yeah. It feel, there's, it's wild to me how many people don't know how to project and they just yell. Yeah. I teach summer theater summer camp to children. And the amount of time I have to be like, that shrill thing you're doing... It's not good for you. It's bad. It's yeah. bad. It's bad. It's bad. Yeah, it's all about... Um, for those... Unmusically aware, uh, it's your diaphragm. It's 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 the difference between breathing uh, with your shoulders going up and uh, versus your tummy going out. I have right? a very funny story about breathing with your diaphragm. Go ahead. So I have asthma. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's so funny. That's the joke. Um, so I was in voice lessons for a very long time before we realized I had asthma. But then I went to the doctors and I was like. Sometimes I have difficulty breathing. 
And she was like, okay, you have asthma. So you have to do this test every now and again so they can see, like, what severity your asthma is. Where Hmm. they, like, give you a little thing you hold in your hand and it has a mouthpiece and you blow into it. And then there's birthday candles on a screen. And you have to try to blow out all the birthday candles on the screen based on your breath. Um, It's strange. Yeah, it sounds... And when I was a kid, I kept thinking, like, I'm not using my diaphragm and my breath support. That's why I'm not blowing these candles out. So there was one day where the doctor was like, okay, do it. And I was like, cool, cool, cool. So I <laughs> breathed in with my diaphragm and I did it. And I did not get any. Well, not I got candles, but I did not get a lot. Mm. And I kept insisting that I do it with my diaphragm. And my doctor was finally like, can we just do it one time <laughs> where you just do like a, like a big breath that's not the slow inhale with your diaphragm? Right. And I was like, okay. And then I blew out more candles that way. But, That's so interesting. Yeah, but as a child, I was like, no, no medical professional. No, <laughs> I need I to know. breathe with my diaphragm. <laughs> my teacher told me that I need to breathe with my diaphragm, and that's how I get the most breath ever. Exactly. I was like, you want me to sustain this to blow out all those candles? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to go forever? I can do that. You just need to let me breathe correctly. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. So um, what was your theater experience like in college? It was vastly different than oh, growing sure. up. Yeah. Because, well, also I was so used to, I was very fortunate to get put into professional theater environments so early mm. with like Dutch Apple and AMT mm-hmm. and Rainbow. So I had a somewhat basis of, you know, going into it, how Things are different than they are in your high school theater department. Of course. But at my school, there is no musical theater major. You major in theater, and then you double minor in dance and music. That's the track they put you on. But I double majored, and I tried to minor in dance, and then that didn't work with my schedule. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sorry. So I just double majored and then took voice lessons on the side, and I ended up having to audit a lot of my voice lesson slots so I didn't even get credit for them it's Mm. fine it's fine I'm sure it all worked out in the end um but Muhlenberg is there's so much opportunity there which is really nice Mm. because there's there's eight acapella groups yeah that's a lot of acapella it's a lot of acapella groups and like they all have their own specializations like the girls next door all female acapella, acapellas. The kids next door. <laughs> right? Then there were the acapellas. Acapellas, all yeah. Dudes. All dudes. Um, there were the dynamics. They just were like, you know, the acapella group. They got invited to all the like the school functions. To oh, sing. So, so they were like the top. They were the, well, they were all a little pretentious, so nobody really wanted to go to their like. For the students' performances, if you wanted to go somewhere fun, you went to see the Acapellas. Well, yeah, I, I, that's exactly what I thought. Because yeah. all throughout my high school experience, it was the men's qu- chorus that were the most fun. Oh yeah, they were. They did Maleke and Minky Maka, uh, with like like their shirt off. <laughs> like <laughs> that's so good. It was it takes the shirt off. That's so funny. The Acapellas, their thing was they all wore flannels. Oh really? Yeah, they all looked like lumberjacks while they were singing. Um, but they would do like a Halloween concert, and they do it would do a fundraiser. So they were all in costume, but then you could pay to pie a fella in the face as they were singing. It was phenomenal. I'm sure it's, it was the best college experience. No, it, and it's it's always funny to me where, uh, but uh, like the guys will do something really funny. But um, I'm curious why the girls don't. Do you have maybe in, any insight into that? Um. Is it just that I just don't want to make them get up my makeup all pied up? That also probably because I don't know. I don't want to speak for the girls next door, but like, well, like in your personal opinion, in my personal opinion, I'd be kind of hesitant to just let somebody pay to come up on stage and assault me. <laughs> <laughs> I you guess know? I, when you put it that way, I guess that's that's fair. <laughs> like somebody might just get a little carried away. That's fair. That would make me a little nervous. That's a, I guess that's fair. Probably probably that is a factor. Did you ever pie one of the fellas in the face? Absolutely I did. <laughs> Absolutely I pied a fella. Absolutely. Like so many I don't want to do it, but I would gladly. Oh yeah. 
so many of my friends were fellas. And, like, granted, most semesters I was broke, so I didn't buy fellas. Right. But there were oh, – my friend Chris, me and my roommate Lydia both bought pies. And we went up and we, we got them on both sides, the pies. <laughs> Because, yeah. Do they keep just going on? Oh, of course. They just keep singing. <laughs> That's There's got to be some, I hope there's some video out there. Oh, absolutely there has to be. I want to see it. Oh, yeah. It was, I mean, Snapchat was very large when I was right, in college. Right, of course. So then, like, the next morning, you'd, because. Yeah, you, right. You would just see would all just the see videos. all the videos of all the fellas getting pied. I wonder how it, it inhibited or encouraged their singing in one way or another. I mean. Depending on placement of the pie. <laughs> right, right. You just can't. I, yeah, right. I guess, yeah. <laughs> was it just cream? Like, yeah, it was whipped cream whipped in a pie cream. tin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it just... Right in the face. It was That's so, so good. funny. It was phenomenal. I think that was the most fun any of the acapella, like the most fun thing any of the acapella groups did. Well, I mean, I mean, what, what, what more do you want? You know, you Honestly, know? <laughs> I want good music. And I want to pie my friends in the and face. I, and I want a funny performance too. Yeah. That's I mean that's 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 what it was like for the men's choir. I wish they had done something about like that, but they were just always over the top. And which is so good. Which is so which is what theater and art should be. It's what it should be. It's what it should be. <laughs> I don't want to see the black dresses and the and the suits. I want to see Maliki Liki Maka with with bras on the yes. men. <laughs> that's what I want. <laughs> and then do the hula. Yes. <laughs> sing. Yeah, like, sure, you and your lovely dress, you sound phenomenal. I enjoyed the product you're putting out. Where's the entertainment? (laughs) But I want a spectacle. (laughs) Because also at Muhlenberg, with the way class schedules and rehearsal schedules for, like, the main stages worked out, you wouldn't be done till 11 Mm p.m. So the acapella groups, and then we had what are called performance ensembles that did, like, improv or sketch comedy, things like that. Their performances wouldn't start until 11.15. So everybody's, you know... Get into the tired yeah. point, so you need to be engaged. You need to be engaged. I need something. I, I need to pie somebody to be engaged. I need a fellow with a pie. <laughs> That's but I mean there are probably some really good acapella groups that just made beautiful music, and that is sure is engaging. I know. Yeah. Uh, they they did here they well, the acapella group here they did a uh, like a a, a doo wop. Ooh, okay. Like a doo wop acapella. And that was that was engaging. They didn't really do it. They just did like their snapping fingers, but still. Yeah, still. Uh, hearing doo wop in here, like all that, all it's that so stuff. Cool. It's so cool, and it's like, I wish I were that talented to be a skinny doo wop doo wop. Just scatting everywhere. <laughs> scatting. <laughs> That's bad in the wrong context. Correct. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going. And, yeah, right, with with everyone else doing like harmonies and whatever, and like, dude, that's insane. That is. That sounds so good. Yeah, it was awesome, and uh, just to just to have that ability to, uh, have your intonation correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and with yeah. everybody else intonations being correct, matching, matching. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's uh, and people don't understand. Uh, everyone has a different timbre. Yes, and uh, you have to blend. If you have two people with different timbres, uh, think of it like that. How can I best explain this? There's some. <laughs> people, you know, it's hard to explain to like yeah. a non music non music person. So you have a person who has a very wavy voice, and and that means vibrato galore, right? And then you have those Me. people who have naturally. Not vibrato voices, right? Yeah. And uh, those will, uh, or you have someone like me who's more nasally. Someone who's uh, different has more chest voice. Yeah. More of a, a deep gravelly, like back in the throat, kind of like this almost. Um, and that's not where my voice sounds. <laughs> <laughs> my voice is all up here, especially because I, my, my sinuses are being attacked. But, <laughs> but um, if you put those two people together, it's going to sound awful yeah it's not gonna sound good you, if you and you st- step a few feet away you're gonna hear it it's gonna be bad yeah and you're gonna be like it's like uh hearing nails on a chalkboard almost so you have to mix and match people and this can go for this is why this is why they're they're if you ever have a duo if you match them up with any other duo they're not gonna sound they're only a duo because they, they sound, sound good, good together. together yeah you can have a duo or a trio and have people just not sound good together because they're 
their wavelengths interfere with each other, uh, meaning like sound waves. And they interfere with each other and they cause weird feedback. Yeah. Uh, that you could actually hear, and it's it's <laughs> it's incredible and it is awful at, at the, the same, same time. time. Me and one of my friends, Noah, there have a couple times we've been able to, and I don't have, like, the, ugh, but we would sing a note together, and then um, it would ha- we would have what we call, what he told me was constructive interference. Yes. So we could hear, like, our waves kind of battling Actually, each other, yeah. and we both just were kind of like, what is happening? Yeah, because, I mean, even when you're singing, you can feel it. Yeah. And when you're singing next to the person who has the weird weight, you have a weird, weird wave wavelength with. with, yeah. And you can hear, and you're like, yeah, and I was this like, is, what is happening What is here? going on? Yeah, th- yeah, that's and that's why uh, placement is so important in choirs. Yeah. It, don't think of placement in choirs as if, oh, I'm first chair and second chair. That's not the reason at all. Yeah, it's because of who you're next to. And it's because of the wavelengths. So they, they, they what they try to do is match the wavelength closest to whoever's next to you and to make a better sound overall. It's not yeah. it's not because you're better or worse than whatever like I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's more it's more uh, attuned to your voice specifically, how it sounds next to this person versus that person. Yeah. Because it matters. It matters so much. And like some singers, once you're trained well enough, you're able to you mix manipulate that, yeah. that and able to blend with more people more easily. Mm-hmm. But it's something you have to have an ear for, and you have to be able to just do it. Do it. Yeah, and it's so it, people like what, what do you mean do it? it it's literally you just do it. Do it, <laughs> and, and because you, it's so the the changes you need to make in your own voice and throat and tongue. A soft palette, yeah, so minuscule that you can't explain it. And there's no here. Let me show you. Yeah, <laughs> you, can't go into your mouth you just have sure. to. Yeah, you have to feel it. You have to feel it, and you have to know. That, okay, that's what it is. And like, voice teachers, voice coaches, they can help you tell you what sensation you're supposed to have, help you with placement. But everybody's is instrument different. is different, so while you can have coaching to help you get to that point, it's still that thing of you have to play and figure it out for yeah. yourself. I, I can't tell you how important it is to practice by yourself if you're a vocal major. Yeah. Because it's only there where you you have to, literally you're going to break your voice and okay. build it back up. Yep. And that's when you figure out, oh, this is where I need to be. Because this you can start to feel the, the resonance in your own head. Yeah. And you can start to feel the resonance in your chest or when, you, when you're doing a chest voice versus you can feel it here when you're doing it here. When everything buzzes, yeah. Yeah, you can feel, yeah it's, it is the craziest thing. It's something, and it's something you have to tune yourself into because we do it all the time without realizing it. Yeah. And and that's the because th- you do it you do something so over and over again it becomes numb, and or well you you're numb to it right yeah it's just automatic it's just automatic and you don't think about it but I know because I can feel it and I know what it feels like I know I'm I'm buzzing way up here because I'm speaking way up here, and I didn't know that until somebody pointed it out to me, yeah and you'll never know that until you figure it out oh now that's I can feel is. it down here and oh now I can feel it up here. <clears throat> it's yeah <laughs> the voice is so crazy and it translates into acting too because yeah. like my voice sounds like my voice sounds yes it's high it's kind of pingy um and in my acting classes i would get put in roles where my professors would be like try playing with your lower register and i'd be like okay oh yeah <laughs> sure <laughs> so then i would Try to use those techniques I learned in voice I class. Lower register. Oh no, this is not. Oh, like I, I don't know. It's like kind of lower a little bit. I yeah, don't know. It's a little lower. But it also um, is slower than how I normally talk. Yeah. Yeah. So when I would play with my lower, because also I didn't want to hurt my voice by just pushing it down. Yeah, and that is a worry. Yeah. So I had to get creative with. This is how I sing. How can I translate it into how I talk mm. for these professors who know how I speak but want something different? <laughs> yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah, it's and it, 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 it is true. Like once yeah. I'm, I'm trying to speak down low here, you kind of have to force yourself. Yeah, it's like a little bit. 
You just kind of, yeah. Yeah, there's a weird cadence, yeah. Yeah, because uh, whenever I talk like, low, it's slow. <laughs> it's kinda, I almost sound like Obama. <laughs> like, the way his, his, his Yeah, he has his, that his, slow cadence. He has that slow cadence where it's like, and then I will uh, receive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's one thing you always found kind of funny with Obama. Is it was his was his cadence? Yeah, yeah, because it was always it was always we're gonna do this and uh, we're gonna do this. And <laughs> it's kind yeah. of funny to listen to sometimes. Um, anyway, yes. back up here. Okay, okay. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> and it's, talking higher is I don't know. For me, it's so much easier. It is. It really is. I think it's because you just throw everything up into your mask. And it takes a lot of pressure off the vocal cords. Yeah. And I'm naturally a, a high, I'm like a tenor one. Okay. Um, Because uh, I, can, I can't I can hit a C below middle C. Okay. Which is a very a limited range for a guy. Yeah. Yeah. So I, but I can hit everything up. But my, fals, my falsetto doesn't start until like halfway up the treble clef. Okay. Or even more. Um, so... So I, I, have a, I have a wide range upwards, not so much lower. Lower. Unless I start, like, doing, like, the, the Mongolian deep, uh, like, throaty. Throat sing. so singing, With the yeah. two tones. <laughs> <laughs> that, there was one day in my life I was super sick, and I went to sing a note, and then the other note came out, too, and I had two, and I was like, this will never happen again, so I'm just going to sustain this. I was like, I just can yeah. enjoy this. There's one. There was one dude in in our uh, in our college band, college band, college w- chorale. We'll call it because that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it its name. Yeah. And um, whenever he was given a pitch, he would automatically sing the o- octave below. So he <sighs> had this insane lower end, and and we were like, no, no, it's an octave up, and he he couldn't do it. But he would, so he was the base. The base. You are the base. <laughs> yeah, because he would, um, uh, we had a fun name to call him. But um, uh, <laughs> it was all the way down here, and, and uh, it was incredible to listen because it was so vibrant and so resonant. It was like, yeah. he's a cello. <laughs> he is a cello. He's a living cello. <laughs> a living bass, a uh, living double bass. And it was, it was so incredible. So I'm curious. Uh, how did you, getting back to your life. <laughs> oh, back to, okay. Um, how did you go from, when, when, when did you decide to do, what is the rail stage company? So, the Strasburg Railroad is, let me get this line right, the oldest continuous short line railroad in the United States. Mm. Um, and last year, they decided to bring entertainment to the railroad. Um, so they did uh, a stunt show, which I was in. That's what I got my start in. They posted auditions for a stunt show, and I said, great, cool, doing that. So I auditioned for that. And Were you a stunt woman? I have a lot of experience with stage combat. That's okay. something I did a lot in college. So I was like, great, cool, I'll do that. So I did <laughs> I'll it. fall around safely. <laughs> I'll fall safely. I jump from 10 feet in the air. What? Yeah. It, it's it's always incredible when I, I like to watch like stuntmen. Um here's a good YouTube channel to core it's called Corridor Corridor Crew. Oh, and yeah. uh yeah, Corridor Crew. And what they do is they're a bunch of CGI artists, but uh so they like CGI react a CGI artists react to blank uh whatever whatever movie. Okay. Or and then so they then they started doing stuntmen react to different stunts. Oh, that's cool. And like they figure, they get uh, you know, Black Panther. Yes. They get the guy who does the stunts for Black Panther, uh, Gee, Gee something. Um, I can't remember his name, but uh, they'll have like different stunt, like different like Marvel or Disney uh stunt men and stunt woman come in and react to their own stunts and like explain how they how did they it. Do it. And yeah, so well, they and then they like teach you. Okay, you have to tuck your chin mm-hmm. in order to fall, or else you're gonna whiplash and bang your head. And like I'm like. Okay, so whatever I fall accidentally, not on purpose, I know what to do. Tuck your chin. <laughs> Tuck your chin, protect your chin. Yeah. But go ahead, so how did you fall from 10 feet? So, well, I jumped. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a scaffolding platform that's built. Is this while the train is in motion? No. 
So we ride the train out to the end of the line, and then we do a fight. And then we get back on the train, we ride the train back to the station, and then we get off, we do another fight, and then we do the fall. Is is there, like, a whole storyline in the meanwhile? Or there is, is there? yes, okay. there is a story. <laughs> like, like, ah! Wait. Ah! ah! <laughs> we get back on the train. Hi, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> nice to see you. Please, like, look at the too. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, yeah, there's a story to it. It's a, it's a train robbery show. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah, we get back to the station. We have a crash pad, which is a big, the big mess yeah, the you big fall mass. on. Um, which gets very hot in the, oh, I'm sure. s- the July sun. Um, and then, like you said, well, I do a forward fall as opposed to falling backwards. Okay. So what does that entail? So I have to, like, kick my legs out from under me, and I have to get distance, and then I flatten my body out, <laughs> and then I tuck my chin, and I land on the mat. On your front or your back? No, on my back. Oh, okay. So you're going like, what? Yeah. So I kick in. So I'm facing the direction that I'm going to jump in where the crash pad is. Gotcha. And then I kick my leg so that eventually with my legs out in front of me, my body goes flat. Yeah. And that's another thing I learned. You got to gotta keep your body flat. Yes. Because or else you're going to, it's, it's. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt the area that you do hit. Yes. With, uh, your, and I knew this before I saw, I saw their show. Uh, just from being stupid. Uh, <laughs> okay. But, uh, we'll just keep it at that for now. But um, well, if you lay flat, you're spreading out the spreading out the area of impact. Yes. Which is gonna lessen the damage. Yeah. Right. So in and, and adverse to like landing on your feet, you're taking all that impact in your legs. And then the shock. And then the up. shock goes up your body, and you can break bones so quickly like that. Yeah. And you can. Your feet can like fall off if if you do it if you do it hard enough. You know what I mean? Well, I'm like genuinely. But yeah, like you can like snap your foot off, because I've seen it happen. Uh, and and no, and it's gross. And that's why you gotta lay on, on your back. Your back. <laughs> so I gotta land on your back. And flat. And I, I've heard the best way to do it is to lay back and then uh, kind of like stiff in your stiff in your back. I I would show it, but I'm not gonna get on the ground. <laughs> no, yeah, you wanna you want your back to be flat. You want your back to be in line with, like, where your butt and shoulders mm-hmm. are. And then you want to tuck your chin so you're not smacking your brain. Um, and you put your arms you at put your, your arm, sides. Yeah, at your side, yeah. Because if you land with your arms, the, that was hard you, for yeah. me. Because the instinct is to just, it's the, my catch arms yourself. go. Yeah, yeah to catch but yourself. that can really mess up your arms. It can. So, and, that, and then you want your legs to be straight. My biggest thing is when I fall, I have to remember to keep my legs on the same plane as my body, because I usually land with my legs up. Oh, yeah. That's not what you want to do. So I have to no. consciously be like, flat body, bring your legs down. And, like, some people um, have a hard time fully laying, so, like, you land sitting mm-hmm. when you fall forward, and then your okay. spine your just goes... Butt, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's so interesting. Uh, but, uh, and it all depends on which way you're falling. Because if you're, le- if you're falling on your side, there's a different tactic, right? Yeah. You want to have touch first and then and then and lay then, down. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Uh, touching with your foot first and then laying down. Um, in the, a safe way. In a Not, safe, yes. In, in, <laughs> in you don't go like way. that. You just touch and then like lay touch down. Touch and lay, yeah. Yeah, touch and lay. It's so it's so fun to be able to fall down and because I I've slowly started to pick up these things and what I'll do is just because I'm a I'm a dork and I love messing with people I'll just trip myself and be like ah. And and fall. Fall safely. <laughs> I like to when I give people a hard time, like if somebody will just like push me soft, like gently, like as a and joke, just I'll just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. I did it on Chucky's Rock, on oh, like the edge, no. because oh, and everyone was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. I'm a jerk. Yeah, I'm a jerk. And you know what I got for it? I got a bloody knee. But you know, it was so worth it because because <laughs> you're not supposed to. But you can go out on the rocks. Right, um, right. I'm, I'm not Don't saying I ever did. do that. Don't do that. No one in this room has ever. No, but if it were the case. <laughs> if I were to have gone out. If I were rocks. to have gone out. And uh, there's, it's a little, it's like a little jagged. So like, there's a rock here and there's like rock underneath. So you can like, and there's like good amount of space before the cliff. Yes. Um, uh, so if one were to pretend to fall off, you could just. And then it looks like you're gone. 
No. <laughs> so that's exactly what I did. That's <laughs> may terrible. Have done, may have done. May, may have done. Hypothetically. Done. Hypothetically, not uh, long ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I like, ah! And they're like, Glory! And they're like, I'm fine. I'm like, you... Uh, but I gave it a few seconds because, you know, you, you want them to panic. freak out, yeah. You know, uh, hypothetically, you want them to freak out a little bit. Yeah, hypothetically. hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was one of the funniest pranks I have ever pulled off. But people were like, beating the crap out of me. <laughs> we thought you were dead. <laughs> hypothetically. Hypothetically. <laughs> I did something like that, yeah, well, something by like that, I mean, very mean to the cast at the railroad yesterday. Um, we had an injury in the cast, mm. so we took him to urgent care, and then it wasn't anything major or something, he just needs rest to heal. Right. But I texted our group chat, and I was like, so Griffin broke his sternum. And the entire chat was like, what? What's going on? Oh, my gosh. How did you do the show today? Are you? And I was like, yeah, there's a hole in his sternum. And they were like, what? And then our company manager was like, it's gushing blood. Or no, it's <laughs> bursting with blood. And they were like, the internal bleed. How did that happen? Oh, my gosh. And then we were both like, nah, he's fine. He just he's needs fine. to rest. <laughs> and everybody was so mad at us. You know, it, it's, it's always really funny, like, because oftentimes, like, it's simple injuries that, uh, but you can make them sound god awful. So bad. And uh, for example, um, something I did do, not hypothetically did, but something I truly did you do. You did actually do. I did actually do. Uh, was I, I sprained my ankle. And um, p- people sprain their ankles all the time, right? But what I did to do that, I should have, my foot should be in pieces. Um, what I did is I went ice skating, of all things. Okay. And I'm I'm a pretty good ice skater. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm I can't do. Tw- well, I can't do twirls, but I I can't jump and like do. I'm not a fancy skater. I can ice skate. You know what okay, I mean? Yeah. People say they can roller skate, and then there's people who can roller, roller skate. Yeah. I'm one of those people who can roller skate. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but for ice skating, I can actually can roller skate. Okay. Um, I ice can't skating. Do otherwise, well, it's a, it's a bunch of fun. It, it's something I grew up and and doing uh, camp at, at a skate rink. Okay. You do so, you do skating. There you go. Um, but uh, so I was trying to be fancy at this unfancy skate rink, and um, at an unfancy skate rink, they don't they don't make sure the ice is nice and smooth. Oh no! And no zamboni. Uh, well, they had a zamboni, but it was every every like few hours or so. So it was a long time until the zamboni got around to make the ice real nice and nice and shiny oh, and smooth. No. Uh, but it, it, if you know anything about ice skating, it needs to be smooth or else you're going to have problems. Yeah. And um, what happened was is I went to go for a sharp stop and with both feet. And I've done this many times. But uh, this time, because the, the ice was not smooth, my ankle, instead of going like this, went like, and oh. my entire body went the other way. Yeah. No, gross. No. I know. My, I sh- uh, I've seen people do that, and they have a bone popping out. Uh, yeah, right. So I in and uh, I heard a crack, and and I went down. And I'm like, this is it. This is this, the end. <laughs> this is the moment I have finally broken a bone. I haven't yet. Uh, and but it felt really nice because it was like it was like a, it was like a pop like like a cracking like a of clean. like a, like a cracking of the knuckles kind of okay. kind of pop so it was like that felt nice but i am messed up and i know it so i just sat there and, pe- and people were like Corey, are you okay i'm like yeah i'm just preparing for the pain when i get up <laughs> mm. cuz you you know when so- when something is broken you don't feel the pain until you sit on it yeah, or you touch it put weight on it and i'm like I'm pre- mentally preparing myself for the excruciating pain, and I just don't even want to look at my foot. I don't know. I I can still feel it, so that's a good thing. But I don't know if it's attached to me or not. Oh, <laughs> like, so oh yeah, just hang. It. Oh, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared to look at my foot because I'm also the same way. I'll get grossed out. So I, uh, if I know if 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 my foot's like like if there's like a like a puncture out of my skin. I and, and I'm on ice, so it's like slowly getting numbed. So I'm like, I'm also like, okay, I'm getting numbed. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, I'm gonna just sweat. lay here for a little bit. This is actually kind of nice. I'm not, I'm sweaty. And I'm on the ice now. This is actually I'm gonna stay here for a little I'm bit. I'm just gonna stay. Here. <laughs> this is where I live now. This is where I live. Well, and I I stand up and I'm like, oh, I can actually stand on it and it doesn't hurt. Oh. 
So I'm like, hmm. But it, it hurt a little bit. Yeah. It was sore. But it just ended up, I ended up spraining my ankle. Okay. From all that. But, you know, going, it could be way worse. Yeah. Thank God I'm not way worse. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and but people were like, oh, what'd you do? I was like, I attacked a bear. <laughs> fought a bear. Fought a bear. One. Fought a bear. One. Yes. Got all he got. All he did was just tap my ankle. That's all. <laughs> that bear could, didn't know how to fight. Didn't know how to fight me. All he went for my leg. Should have gone for the head. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid bear. Stupid bear. <laughs> um. I have a bear story, but I, I can wait for a different time. You have a bear story. I have a bear story. Um. No, no, no. What kind of bear story? I slapped a bear. What do you want? You slapped, like, in the wild? Well, yeah. It was trying to get in my tent. What do you want me to do? Okay, okay. You didn't specify oh, the yeah, well, scenario. So it, it, well, I was, I was, it, I, I, one of my tent mates had brought food in the tent. That's a no-no. You don't do yeah, that. Yeah, you don't do that. Uh, so a bear, uh, I, I'm a light sleeper. And, I, but uh, a bear came around and I was like, oh, shoot, that's bear but it was a black bear so i knew i could get away with slapping it in the face um because if you don't know black uh black bears all you have to do is make yourself really big and go rawr and they'll run away because they're really skittish um but grizzly bears you have to act dead okay uh because if you if you challenge it it will challenge back the word and if but if you act dead they don't eat dead things oh so if if you act dead they'll just like Rummage around, look at you, sniff, and then r- go away. away. If you're a polar bear, you're dead. Because <laughs> no, polar, no. polar bears will hunt humans, actually. Oh. Like, like naturally. They, they actually hunt humans. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't, and that's terrifying. That is terrifying. So if you're ever feeling like you're being watched down here in, in you know, not the Arctic, <laughs> it's definitely a polar, polar bear. bear. <laughs> yeah, that's if you're being hunted by a polar bear. It's like, I've seen you. And I'm, he's, if you ever go to Canada and you come back here and you see flashes of white, it's that polar bear tracking. Followed me, tracked me all the way from Canada. <laughs> Got but, across the border. Yeah, well, it stuck its nose in and it was, Popped and, it. and it ran away, yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, so, long, long, long bear story short. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, what, what else was I going to do? You know what I mean? I, yeah. I don't want the bear rummaging around in, in a tent and, like, ruining my tent. No, that's fair. And I was, it, <laughs> the sad part is everyone slept through it because so no one saw it. No one saw it. So, so, it's, so, it's like, so it's like, oh, yeah, you did you did we, that. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. sure. And we were like, all asleep. I know, what I, I know what I did. Yeah. You guys are just, well, because I'm a very, I'm like, people who know me know I'm a light, light sleeper. sleeper. Like anybody who's ever roomed with me knows if you just open the door, what's up? I'm yeah, I'm up. You're there. Because and I bears make noise. They make grunting noises and among the snoring I could detect something was different. <laughs> I could detect something was well, different. Well and it was a, something was afoot. And it was four feet. I could <laughs> <laughs> four feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well I mean they make their grunting noises and it was louder than the snoring around me so i, I woke up because and to be quite honest i was probably not even asleep because you know You'd... snoring is loud yeah and I, I i am a light sleeper but uh anyway bear story short bear I, story. I punched a bear <laughs> punch slapped a bear whatever <laughs> punch slapped a bear. um I don't, I don't know uh it was fun fun story scary story fun story but also you punch robbers do you uh do you I, fight? I am robbers. Oh, you are robbers. <laughs> yes, you... I am robbers. We play cops and robbers, and I'm the robber. I am the robber. Yeah, in our show, all the bad guys are ladies. Okay. Um, I'm a clip. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I'll keep talking. I'll keep yeah. the people preoccupied. Hello, people. Um, yeah, so all of our bad guys are ladies. And then there's... Why? 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 Girl power... Yeah, but also, doesn't that like give like a bad impression on ladies though? It's like they're, all of them are stealing. Maybe that, they're all gold. They're literally gold, gold diggers. diggers. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we do have our vigilante at the end is also a woman. Okay, so, so we've got so a good guy lady. So we got a good guy lady. Okay. We got a bad guy ladies and a good guy ladies. Um, and then there's two <laughs> U.S. <laughs> all gold diggers. All gold diggers. Has that joke ever been made before? 
No. Well, yeah, because you do it. <laughs> there's a twist in our show that oh. I won't reveal. Okay. But there, yeah, there's. You gotta make that joke though. Oh yeah, we're all gold. We're all gold diggers. We're all gold. <laughs> we we have a prospector at the railroad who you know just pans for gold, <laughs> like a character, not like just some guy, okay. <laughs> just not some guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's two guys who play U.S. Marshals mm. who are transporting the diamond mm. to Chicago, mm. and then we take over the train. We take the marshals hostage, and then we we get the diamond. Oh. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we don't. Or maybe we don't. Hypothetically. <laughs> Hypothetically, we get the diamond, or I jump off a platform and get blown up. Those are your two choices. <laughs> your two options. <laughs> Those are the things. And you that have happen. to go there to find, find out, out which which one it is. Mm -hmm. That's so that's so crazy that uh, I mean I feel like every railroad show should do. Like, if you're on a train, why not? Why not do a heist? Do a train robbery? Right. If I'm on a train, I want to be rob fake robbed. I want to be, <laughs> <laughs> I be hypothetically robbed. robbed. I don't want to be real robbed. But, so... Yeah. It, have you ever been to Frontier Town? Because you're from I, Salisbury? Yes, I have. Yes. Of course I have. My grandfather lives um, in Ocean Pines. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, growing up, I went to Frontier Town all the time. And that carriage robbery is awesome. It's all I want to do. <laughs> When I go to Frontier Town. Frontier Town, if you don't know it, it's literally the Old West uh, yes. amusement park. It's so fun. It's so fun. They have a water park there, too. Yes. And it was the highlight of all of my school trips. I, you know what? A funny thing? I don't remember any of it. Really? That's no. fair. I, the only thing I remember is, like, the big furnace tower. That, I have memories of the, they would do that Wild West shootout show. I do remember on the okay, main street. Yes, yeah. Now you yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, they would do the sh the the the. I guess it's a duel. Their mm -hmm. their shootout show, and then I remember the um the can can show in the the cafe. Okay, yeah, I remember. Can -can I, dancers. Did did they do gold panning there? Yes, I'm sure they, they did. do. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because I remember doing that. That must have been where I'd done it. Yeah. Um. They have that little thing, yeah, and you pan for the yeah, gold. you pan for the gold. I gotta go there again. I want to go to front. I told everybody at the railroad about Frontier Town too, and now they all want to go. I was like, we need to be more like Frontier Town. <laughs> well, because yeah, I mean, that's what that's what it is. It's the old Wild West scenario, yeah. isn't it? It's phenomenal. It is. It's, it's so fun. It's uh, worth going and checking out. Even even as an adult, I realize I'm gonna I gotta go to all of these places I went as a kid because I never really fully appreciated appreciated it. Yeah, and I don't remember them either. Yeah, I just remember having, like, a good time, and yeah. I had, like, vague flashes of, like, oh, this happened there, but not the whole. Have you ever been to a uh, a restaurant where it's, like, themed where house versus house? Medieval times? No, well, kind of, but it, it's, like, a Romeo and Juliet kind of situation where oh. where the wait waiters, there's, like, different sides of, of, the, of the place, and on this side, it's, like, the Capulets. And on the other side is the the Romeos. I forget their Montagues. last name. Montagues. Montagues. <laughs> and um, the waitresses, waiters from either side, will come to the other side and like m mess up your food or like play with you. And so like some of them might spill water on you on an accident. Like and people know this is gonna they happen. Go in, yeah. they, they go in expecting this, um, but some of them will just like insult you to your face. That's so fun. And yeah, and then there's like this whole battle like kind of going on. Uh, it's not really a stage theater, but it's like it's just like, you know, the waitress little... will come over here and like insult you, put pour salt on your stuff, or <laughs> whatever. Just throw salt on your food. Yeah, and it's a fun experience. Um, it's something I I checked out in uh, Pigeon Forge, okay. Tennessee, which. Have you ever been to Pigeon Forge? I have not. I recommend it's Ocean City on steroids. Okay. So it's where like Dollywood is at. Okay. Um, yeah, right, right, right. It's so it's like this. It's like Ocean City, but you have like there's a whole, there's a like a half full scale replica of the Titanic. There is a full scale replica wax museum of the the uh, not full scale, like it's but it's gigantic <laughs> of Mount Rushmore. Of oh, a wax wow. museum, and they, and on that building they have Donkey Kong hitting on an airplane, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, and there there's a full upside down mansion as well. Like, uh, and, and when I say when I say mansion, 
Imagine uh, two of these campus buildings smushed together. That's how big it is. Oh wow! Yeah, that's how that's how big it is. It's all upside down. It's called Wonderworks, and it's an awesome museum. There's a. Uh, have you ever been to Rainforest Cafe? Yes. There's that, but for Jurassic Park. No. Yes. That's so cool. Yeah, there and, and there's indoor skydiving. There's there's like three track level go kart. Like, three level of go-karts on top of each other. Uh, yeah. So I gotta go to Tennessee. So you gotta go to Tennessee. And and also, there are boot stores where it's buy one, get two free. Wait, like singular like, boots or pairs? Boot pairs of pairs. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that'd, be, just... that'd be a weird marketing play. <laughs> My, yeah, I was like, is it like, like a bit? No, 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 no. It's, but then uh, I realize it's pairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's pairs. So you get really good cowboy boots, you get like for for three hundred bucks, and then you get two, two other pairs. two free pairs. So it's basically uh, one hundred dollar pair. One hundred dollar pair. Well, I mean, but they're they're really high quality boots. So it will be like a legitimate three hundred dollar pair of boots, but you just get two extra. That's awesome. I know it sucks for me though because I'm size fifteen, and you know. That's hard to come by. It's hard to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, no, Pigeon Forge, and and that's only half of the stuff. There's a, there's a building on its side, like a skyscraper, like on its side, uh, it, it, and it's not a skyscraper, but like one of those tw- like the Empire State Building, for example, on its side. Okay. Um, and it's it's so uh, if you if you're gonna have a good time, go to Pigeon Forge. Pigeon Tennessee. Forge, Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. It's like the vacation town without the beach. You know, honestly, I don't need the beach. Yeah, who really does? And but besides gas, there what I went was two eighty five, and that was well. Granted, that was last November, but but still, but still, that was when that was when up here it was like three sixteen. Exactly, or something like that's that. still less than it is here. Three, no, it was three sixty one up here, and it was two eighty five down, down there. there, and that was the cheapest I've ever bought gas ever. Yeah, that's. Like a fake amount of money for gas. It's a f- <laughs> That's not a real amount of money people would ask for gasoline. Well, I mean, uh, I it was funny because I took a road trip and then oh, we didn't know Pigeon Forge was there. We're just like, oh, it's a Titanic Museum, cool. Let's and then we it. and then we got there at, at late night and we're like, this is like the Las Vegas trip, man. <laughs> something like that. We gotta stay. We and we the, we literally we like. We got to at least go into the upside down building. I feel, yeah. I feel, I feel like that's like a requirement. It's, um, yes, a requirement. But, uh, but, but yeah, so uh, what was I saying? But yeah, so on the road trip, the highest I had ever seen gas was in Chicago, and that was 439 at that point in Chicago. Granted, now it's like five bucks. It, yeah. or it got to that point around here. But at that point, I was like, Yo, that's insane, that's man. I would never buy gas. that. I would never buy that. I would never spend that much money on a gallon of gas. Here we well, are. Here we are. And it's 470 something now. I know. I, last year, almost a year ago now, bought a new, a new car, and I got an, an SUV. Now, it has mm. EcoBoost, so mm. it's more fuel efficient, but now I'm just like, Yeah. Gas is so expensive. Gas is and you know what's you know what's fun though? If your if your model is newer than 2001 and you have like flex fuel ca- capacity, uh there's a sheets and this is for all people who have flex fuel uh vehicles. There's a sheet in your in around Lancaster. There's a sheets in Lidditz. Uh you know where like Night and Day Diner is? Yes. Yeah, so if you keep going down that road just beyond that is uh, sheets and they have eighty eight octane fuel, which is which was at least a few weeks ago. It was a dollar, whole dollar. It was like three ninety nine. Oh. Yeah, and and that was a godsend for me. Yeah. For this entire time, so if you okay. if you have flex fuel capabilities, definitely go, go and go go sheets. there and get that gas because oh my goodness, is that a lifesaver? The one by Penn Cinema. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I think so. Um. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that's a godsend for me. Yeah. And thank my I work right next to there, so. So you can just go. So fill I up. knew, I knew. You knew it was there. I knew it was there, and I was like, I gotta tell everybody and my and their mother. Everybody, go to this sheets in Linux. Because it, well, if if because if you don't, it's gonna mess up your uh, engine. But uh, or <laughs> it's it's not gonna be good for your car. I'm not a, I'm not a mechanic. 
Fair. But I'm Me saying, either. but those are the two requirements that it has to be newer than 2001 and it has to be uh, flex fuel capacity. capacity. Yeah. Okay. This is not legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. But that's, that's, that's what the gas station told me. So. Okay. So if you're struggling, Try dollar it cheaper. Di- di- yeah. Yeah. Because what I used to do was uh, Maryland is had had gotten rid of their gas tax for a while. So it was like a good 50 cents or so cheaper down there. So I would, I, I did the math. And it was cheaper for me to go to drive, drive to down Maryland. to Maryland and, and get gas there and then drive back up than it was for me to get gas at my local corner shop. Oh, my goodness. And so that's, that's, that's what I did for a little while. Well, I mean, I mean, people, I'm, I was struggling. I'm, I'm still yeah. struggling. Yeah. But, um, it, and I was willing to do it. And I had no, yeah. living in Delaware, Maryland, I, I had known it was, it was cheaper down. It was like at least a good 20 cents so cheaper down there than it is up here. Yeah. Uh, at least it had been until everything started nationalizing and yeah. becoming the same price same everywhere I went. And that was upsetting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Because that, cause that, at some point, I would just go over to like Coatesville, and it would be cheaper there than it would it be here. than it was here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was fun when I, whenever I worked at Coatesville, but now it's, there's no point. There's no point in there's driving no point. to Coatesville. But, besides work. And, besides work. And the awesome theaters they have there, like Revival Productions. There you go. There you of. go. Um, shout out to Heather Graber. Uh, so we are have hit an hour, so we're going to get off the radio we have um you didn't send me any songs of yours did you no i did not okay <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll play some of my songs yeah um i wrote this song two years ago during the pandemic uh and it, it was a, just a reminder of when everything goes away it's god that remains and okay. with that said this is you remain i hope you guys enjoy When I am weak, can no longer speak, you are there right beside me. When all hope is lost and I can't bear the cost, you are there paying it for me. And when things turn to dust and there's nothing to trust, you are there. To me, oh, it's clear who you're meant to be. You are my strength, you are my faith. When all things fade away. Tell 
that was my song, You Remain. And for whatever reason, if you can't find that on Facebook when we do our live version, because copyright people are stupid. Ah, uh, yes, they are. I own the copyright to that. And they still uh, mute, strike you. They still strike me and mute it. Um, yeah, I know. So, and this has been happening for multiple guests where, uh, you know, the person sitting right across from, from me has the copyright okay. to their music and it just gets muted because someone owns the copyright. It's like, well, it's me. Yeah. Like I own it. I'm, this is okay. I it's say mine. it's okay. <laughs> this belongs to me. It belongs to me. <laughs> and, but there's no recourse to fighting it. So it's just, you have to accept it and move on. And so, yeah. So all my Facebook stuff is like, uh, there's a portion of the podcast is it's muted. muted. Because it's copyrighted Copyright music, material. yeah, right, and it's like, well, that's dumb. But so yeah, if you want to, if you want to listen to the song, you can check us out on Spotify instead, where they, they don't mute the where music. they don't mute copyright. And, and um, so you can follow us there. Just search up the story Corey Rosen. That's C O R Y R O S E N. You can find us there. And if you want to see all the upcoming guests, be sure to check us out on Facebook dot com forward slash the story Corey Rosen or our Instagram the underscore story underscore podcast and if you really want to support us please uh, check into some merchandise that we have with the stickers and hoodies with the logo on the front and the first 50 guests on the back we're going to get you guys back to the radio but we're going to continue on Facebook live and I will see you in a few hours, actually, we have a uh, we have another guest, Kieran K. Benson, that's coming on. He's an awesome drummer dude, so stay tuned for that. But we're going to continue on on Facebook Live. See you guys. <laughs> All right, so. Yes. That's, okay, now we're off the radio. <laughs> now we're off the radio. Um, so, what is it like to have to balance being an actor and then going to substitute teaching? Or are they are they both acting jobs? Interesting question. <laughs> she was like, hmm. um, I generally, well, it's December right now, so I'm not substitute teaching, right. obviously. But generally, I'll do it between contracts. Like if I'm waiting mm. to get paid again, I will substitute substitute teach to get paid. Yeah. Um, I've been considering this year because I have Mondays and Tuesdays off from the railroad. There's no entertainment there those days. Um, substituting Mondays and Tuesdays, just you know, because mm-hmm. I like money. Money's it, great. It is helpful and beneficial. It's you know so nice when you have it, and so terrible when you don't. It, I am feeling that now. Yep, yep, yep. So I've been considering that. Um, I'm also the I choreograph the musical at Penn Manor High School. Oh, so it's nice. I like to substitute teach high school more than. Elementary, middle school's fine. Um, high school's fine. Middle school's fine. I've heard middle school is the worst because it's like where everyone's like figuring themselves out. Well, yes, but like as a substitute teacher, I've come to notice that elementary school kids they need a lot more of you know their children. Yeah, yeah. Right. they need more of guidance, and it's hard, at least for me, when you don't know the kids. And you're only there for a day, and you're right. like, you have needs that I don't really know how to meet because right. I just met you, and you have to like manage like twenty six little kids, and you're like, oh dear. So for me personally, <laughs> oh I like to substitute teach high school because those kids generally, you're like, they know what they're doing. Yeah, you're like, okay, you're gonna do this, and they're like, awesome. And then the only question I get is like, you know, where do I turn this in, or can I go to the bathroom? And right. I'm like, absolutely, you can. Um, and when I substitute teach, I like to try to get either positions in like chorus or orchestra or band of course, right. or an English class or like art. Mm-hmm. I try to get those substitute teaching jobs and it's nice because at Penn Manor, like I grew up in that program and like I know those teachers. Right. So it's nice to be like, oh, I'm in for Simowitz today. Perfect. And I was like, I know how a chorus works at Penn Manor. Um, other schools, it's like, okay, I don't really, but like, it's the same. Like, it's I the can, same. I can be like, do Direct your sight reading, yep. you know? Um, and it's nice when I substitute teach at Penn Manor because then I know all those, a lot of the kids from the musical. So it's nice to go in and be like, okay, 
I see familiar faces and like kids also listen better <laughs> when they're like, ah, yes, I know Alyssa. I want to be cast right. in a musical. I can't be a jerk. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's so, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um. So how do you get to substitute at multiple places? Because I've never encountered that. So the way it works, at least in Pennsylvania, is I started during the height of the pandemic Lovato. Um, Sorry, I was like, <laughs> what was that? I was like, oh, I got you. The pandemic Lovato. Um, I was like, no, like, no theater's happening. Mm. Nowhere's open. So I got my background checks. I got FBI checks. I got fingerprinted. All the stuff you have to do. All the stuff you have to do. I got a TB test, which is just delightful to have happen to your body. Um, they Oh, the tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, yeah. I was like, what? They stick the needle in between the layers of your skin, and then they wiggle that. it around to put the, the drop in there. Like it's the thi- it's a thing where I it hate does- needles though. It doesn't feel any worse than like a shot or getting your blood taken. But it's just looking exactly. At it. It's when you have when you see it that it's like I I know Ooh. every single time I have to go to doctors. I'm like, listen, uh, I want to be on Twitter over here. Yeah, you, here's my arm. Do whatever you have to do. Tell me when I'm done, and don't even tell me when you put it in because yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be tense, and I know that's not what you need. Yeah. I went on Accutane during the pandemic, which is like some pretty intense drugs for clearing up acne, and I had to get my blood taken every month. Mm. So I've become better at it, but I still would have to just like I'd give my arm, and then I'd be like, "Oh, what's happening over there?" Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, uh, kids, uh, you want to hear a joke? I just learned, and I'm I'm totally I haven't told a million times to a million other doctors, <laughs> including you, <laughs> in the past. Right? I just, yeah. The needles are just, and I had to get, when I got the choreographer position, I had to get another TB test. Because they're like, your other one's like two years old. We don't want that. And I was like, but you only have to get them every five years. Yeah, right, right, yeah. <laughs> but they don't want to. I, I, had, I had a stitching. You see my finger, how it's dented? Yes. I was dumb. And <laughs> okay. I, I might still be dumb. But um, what I did, I was like, uh, I was riding a bike, and I was like, I wonder what happens if I put my finger on the gear chain while I'm riding my bike. No. And it got stuck on the gear chain, and it, uh. went, it went around, and uh, I came off, and I was like, oh, half my finger is missing. I have to tip my finger, at least. And uh, so I had to get stitches. Oh. Yeah. And so what the, what they had, I and I was at least 11, at, uh, at least 11, or 10 or 11. And they had to get three nurses to sit on me. Because you... Because I was... <laughs> not, I saw the needle. The needle was this big. And, I, and, and in my mind, I'm in like this wide. And I'm like thinking in my head, that's going to go through my finger. <laughs> and it's going to go right through. And like they were, like were going to shove it through my finger. Oh. Because I was dumb. <laughs> you were a kid. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so I was like, and so they had to get three nurses to hold me down, and that's that's that, that's a strong kid. <laughs> to get yeah. Three, three kid, three nurses to hold just so they can get a little shot. And, but it, but I was right. It hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but I was right. Those nurses lied to me. Yeah, they was like, "It's gonna be a pinch." No, it was, and it's probably because I was all tensed up that the reason why it hurt so bad. Exactly. Um, but after that, it, it was like, "Oh, this is." I don't feel my finger anymore. <laughs> I'm numb. I'm numb. It's okay. It's the same, uh, the same thing at, at the dentist. Uh, when they like put the numbing jelly on, like you have to fix them. Like, and I, I'm convinced it doesn't work. Cause okay. They, well, because, uh, you know, the whole Bill Cosby bit where it's like, oh, my lip is on the floor. Yeah. Whatever. But um, I can still feel the cold water. Like, like the water, like I can feel it. Uh, I guess you're supposed to not be able to feel it. I can still feel like the pain, like a dull pain. I, I feel like I feel like I've got it too many times to the point where I'm like starting to feel a little like bit maybe, immunity. Maybe uh, I don't know if that if that's how that works. I have no idea. But I I assume once you use something enough, you know, you get you get used yeah. to it and it doesn't work as well. I wonder if that works for numbing numbing shots. I don't know. I don't. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. But, 
Or maybe I just need multiple shots of it. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, maybe they just have to up your dosage. <laughs> but it's it's like it still hurts when I, when I, when I'm drilling into my tooth or whatever. No thank yeah, you. Yeah, no thank you. No and, thank you. And that's why I started the brushing and flossing my teeth all the time. All the time. Because I haven't had a cavity, and uh, I went back to the dentist one time, and and it was the first time ever, and they said you're good to go. No no point. I'm like, I'm good. Uh, uh, I'm good. I can go. I can go. I, I don't have to stay in endure pain. I'm free to leave. <laughs> I'm free. I'm free. I'm a free elf. <laughs> Tommy is a free elf. Tommy is a free elf. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, I gotta get fillings redone. But uh, but mm. whatever. I'll deal with it. I got two. I gotta get done. So now I'm just like, uh, preparing for that mentally. That's fair. That's fair. But for uh. Going back to teaching children. Yes, teaching children. <laughs> what are um? So that's cool. You get to so you get to do multiple schools. Yeah. And it's kind of like a like a tenure. You get to pick and choose whichever ones you want to do. Kind of, yeah. There's an a website and an app, and like once I got approved to substitute teach, I got to select the schools. Like they give me my area, mm-hmm. and they were like, "These are the schools in your area," and so I picked like. And Manor and Township and Ephrata and, you know, all of the school districts around here. Right. And so I go into a system. They have a system and then they have all of the jobs posted. And my mom was a substitute teacher when I was growing up. And she would wait every morning. They would call her and they'd be like, these are the jobs we have available. And she'd be like, great, cool. That's the one I'm taking. But now with like COVID and teacher shortages, I just log in. I just log in and there's millions. Yeah, dozens. And like I can just go through and I can just pick this is where I'm going to go today. That's where I'll go on Wednesday. And like you can go pretty far out. But yeah, I just go in and I can filter by like I don't want to wake up that early tomorrow. So I'm not going to pick the schools farther away that I have to drive more Mm -hmm. for. So I'll pick the closer schools. And then, yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. Yeah, I. I've been wanting to do substitute teaching for a while because I like to do I like working with kids. I work with kids at at school or at that school at uh my job already. I teach children how to swim. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm working with kids in high pressure, much higher stress situations <laughs> than than might well. I mean, it's life or death. Well, it is life and death, but in people and the kids do do I, if I could uh, the bruises I have. When people like grabbing and kicking me in the wrong areas or, or like whatever, wherever, uh, because you know they're just freaking out. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you're right. Most most schools don't have that high stress. Yeah. Most of the time, at least. Most of the time, yeah. Um. But uh, I would love to get into that. Yeah. So what was the website you use? Or uh... so the service I go through is the substitute teaching service, mm. STS. STS. Yeah, and they. They take care of everything. You're going to have to watch some very fun videos. I've watched videos in the past. I can do it again. I've yeah. watched boring movies I didn't want to watch. but I'm, That's really fair. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's like it was a whole day for me of me being like, I understand how this works. It's the worst part because we you have to do like work safety. I worked in factories. You have to do work safety training videos. And it's like how to like operate a forklift. And I know how to operate, operate a forklift. forklift. And it's like, all right, I know it's fifteen minutes, and I can't skip, and I can't. I just gonna have to sit here and do the mind numbing. Do the mind numbing watching. Yes, I know how to turn a forklift. I know it's different than a car, and because it's rear, rear, rear wheel drive. Like oh. specific, like specifically, it's rear, rear, real rear behind wheel <laughs> steering. The back wheels. Well, it's it's the back wheels that steer it. Yeah. So it is way different than driving a car, and sometimes I get confused. Okay. Um, so I, I, I'm just driving a forklift is a skill yeah. because the the front wheels they don't steer at all. If I don't know if you knew that. I did not know that at all. Yeah. So that's not that's not how you. So it's it's you have to position position here and then use your wheels to behind you to turn into the spot, right? So it. Oh. So yeah, forklift driving isn't like driving a car at all. In okay. some ways it is. In some ways it's not. But you have to be conscious of, oh, if I turn, the point is up here, not the point back here. Right? Mm, okay. So it is a that little would, weird. Yeah. 
That is, would mess me up. Yeah, well, it messes so many people <laughs> up because they're like, because in, in order to, to turn uh, left, you don't just turn the wheel this way. You have to turn it slightly. And then that, that's enough to get you going. All the way around. All the way, because if you turn it enough, you're just going to be eating donuts. Circles. Yeah, that's from so behind. Funny. Yeah. So and and uh, you know the lifting the levers and all that jazz. There's all that, and that's that's a little that's new with the most being car yeah. drivers. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, it's it's just annoying. Like because uh, I've I've already been like forklift certified, so I have to do it again and, and again. Again and again. Certification for forklift is like oh I'm I'm certified. Because it's it's like new for each different place, and it's not it's it's like unofficially certification. Oh, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I have forklift certified, quote unquote, but you don't. There's no certification. There's like certificate. you don't get a piece of paper. There's no piece of paper. There's like okay, buddy. Uh, I'm sure, yeah. Everyone's forklift certified. Certified, yeah. So you have to redo it, and it's like oh, I know, I know, I know, I, I know. This video. I had to watch this video. I had to put on the handbrake. I know. There was one summer in college, the summer before I went abroad, I started working at Giant because they paid really well. And I was like, great, money for Mm -hmm. Italy. I had to watch the most soul-crushing video about how to bag groceries. And I was just like... I wish they made those fun. Right? They could do it. There's. Have you seen some of the security videos, like uh, like the self-defense videos? Where they're they're teaching you something, but it is hilarious the way they do it. I have not. <laughs> it's it, so it's like it's it's uh it's like bad self defense videos. Okay. Um. Um. Not in that, not in the sense that they're made poorly, but because they they do teach you like self defense, but the memes people make out of them, or the memes they make out of themselves, are okay. are so funny that you just have like. Uh, some of the like if you do it fast enough, yeah, you're gonna be good at it. Yeah. But the way they do it is they do it so slow that it is hilarious. Okay. So they're, they're like, say someone's like pointing something at you from behind, um, and I don't say the word because people don't like the word. Yeah. Um, but uh, and and the 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 video will go like pop, like really slowly, but then someone will make a TikTok of that and like, but and then they're in heaven. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. Of, the, of like them trying it out, um, but it does work. You just have to be quick enough to do it. Yeah. But the joke is, people are quick, quick enough, enough to, to do, do it. it. So it's like okay, okay, and then they're having. Bonk. That I don't know why, but that reminds me of the the TikTok trend, the also the some but <laughs> when you slam into something. In the Shrek one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh They're so fun. Um, TikTok is is funny. I love TikTok. I didn't I, get on it till the pandemic. I now. didn't get on it until just a few weeks ago. Okay. Uh, because of the show, I want to yeah. promote the show, and we're going to promote the show other than Instagram or TikTok, where everybody's at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so I've I've been doing that, and it's like, oh, I really wish I had gotten TikTok soon because some of the like I like watching the cooking. There's this guy who does like the old school cooking books. His name's Dylan. D- I think so. It's yeah. like it's like the skull, s- skull, the the tall skinny dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's like he's blonde. We got it is blonde. Eggy. Eggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I really wish I came on here sooner because sooner. I'm gonna try every single one. <laughs> right? Like, there's ones that he's like, this is really good, and I'm like. Oh, uh, and it's like three, on that video. three, three ingredients that like I have in my kitchen. Right. I'm and like, it's okay. like it's like potato donuts from the 1930s. 30s. This shouldn't work, but I'm gonna try it anyway. anyway. And it's like this works. And it's like well, duh. These people were making it happen. We're making it happen in yeah. the least making it happen time of ever yeah. of history. All of his depression cooking book recipes. I'm like, okay. Okay, as as a struggling college student, I could do that. I was like, yes, okay, I will pay no money to have all that food. All that food and donuts, donuts made out of potatoes, right? That taste amazing, Maybe? and they aren't and they aren't that bad for me. Yeah, right. Because I'm eating potatoes. Yeah, it's not a real donut. It's potatoes. <laughs> it's potatoes. It's potato. It's a potato donut, and it shouldn't work, but it does. It does. Do you have you found a uh, Southern Omaha cat lady? No. So she'll duet with cooking videos. And 
have you seen the the hamburger pancakes video? I have not. So the video has been like taken off the internet now. I tried to find the original. I think the account deleted itself. But it's this really weird cooking hacks channel. And they essentially like put, they're like, we're making burgers. And then they put ground beef in the bowl. And then they put like milk and heavy cream and <laughs> and flour, which like, oh, no. okay, binding agent, flour, breadcrumbs, whatever, and like an egg, whatever, that's normal. Yeah, yeah. And then she put baking powder in it, which you shouldn't need a rising agent for a burger. A burger. <laughs> Um, rising the meats right and like she like mixes it all up and it's like this vaguely pink like liquid looking stuff and then she spoons it into oil like it's pancakes but it's supposed to be burgers right it's disgusting looking but watching this woman react to just everything that's happening she's like I'm worried for you being alone in your house <laughs> like are you okay but then she'll also do it videos that are like really good like People that just make good recipes. I don't know. I like it. I lo- I, it the thing I like on TikTok the most are the comedy bits, the comedy sketches. They're like Vine. It's like yeah. Back in the day, the, they're great. And the cooking stuff. I love the cooking stuff. The cooking okay. stuff. Like, I, 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 uh, there's this Cajun guy that does all the Cajun stuff. Like, he, he, was, he, like, pours, like, and I'm talking, like, big pots of everything. Like, stuff that I don't eat. I can't even, like, he's got a whole bucket of corn on the cob. And he's like, pour it in there. And I'm like, I wish I was that rich to have that, that much, much corn. corn on the cob. And well, he puts, like, all these spices. He puts, like, uh, and even, like, the, the, the drink mixing videos where they pour, like, a whole bottle of vodka or something. And, like, they put a whole yeah, thing. Yeah, they, they just pour, 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 pour. Pour, 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 Dump it in their sink or whatever. And I'm like, what? why? Like, I get you wanting to make like an instructional video, but then you're wasting all this stuff you paid money for. Yeah, it's, and it's like, I, first off, me as a person, I need to know like the. Eight, first off, I don't like to drink, anyway. Yeah. But uh, if if you're gonna make a video like that, at least give us like the measurements. proper measurements, right? Yeah. That's like whole bottle stuff. So like, I I don't want to drink that all for myself. Yeah. That's more of like a party thing, and I'm not buying that much liquor for a party. I'm just saying. No. No. <laughs> No, no, I'm not. Uh, I love you, friends, but no. no <laughs> bottles and that stuff's expensive. That stuff is expensive. And then he's got like that top shelf stuff, and I'm like. And then you're I, dumping it out. And then you're dumping it out. That's and money wasted. I want to know what they do after the video. Do they just let it sit there? Or do they drink it all? Or do they yeah. just let it go down the drain? I, I want to know. Do they just get rid of it? I want to know. Yeah. What do you do? What What do you do? What What do you do? What do, what do you do? <laughs> Let me know. That's, there's a guy who leaves things, so he'll get vodkas, and then he'll leave random things in the vodka for a week. Mm. Just like... Just to see what happens. Just to see what happens. He says, I'm leaving, like, he did um, a jawbreaker, I just saw. Mm. Leaving this in vodka for a week or until something interesting happens. So you've got the alcohol dissolving mm-hmm. whatever he puts in it, and then, like, all this alcohol in this mason jar that he's just poured in. And then it, yeah. it just looks like the jawbreaker didn't go well. Like, he was like, it's just thicker vodka <laughs> with paper in it because it was on a stick. And I was like, uh, gross. You wasted all that vodka yeah, for what? For what? Yeah, you'd wasted all that time and those there's, resources. There's a, a cool guy called the Backyard Scientist. Okay. On, on YouTube, and he does some of these cool experiments. Like, what if I chuck this this aluminum, this hot boiling aluminum, into the pool? What happens? And well, that's the stuff that's fun, right? Yeah, yeah. That's something like, I want to know what happens to that. Happens. Uh, and and or or even better, um, how ridiculous is a channel on YouTube? And they're just three Australian dudes, and they're Christian also, which okay. makes it really nice. Yeah. Um, and what they do is that for the longest time, they had a giant tower. They would just throw stuff off of and just see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's so funny. I, but it's so cool, is it not? So, so they got this, like, they got, like, this giant axe that they would have up, like, this giant point, and they would just throw, like, like a car onto it and see what happened. Like a, like a refrigerator, see what happens. And, the, or they got, like, the, these giant, bump, uh, rubber band balls and just... Throw it, see where it goes. And they'll do these challenges. Like, they'll throw rubber duckies, see how, see how many rubber duckies you can catch. And, like, stuff like they play, like, games like that. Or, 
um, a, another great one where they went to the a dam in in the Netherlands and like these like giant dam and they're like, all right, let's throw a a giant exercise ball full of water and see what happens. And it just exploded. exploded. That's so funny. And they have like slow mo uh, video of all of this as well, so you can just see what happens in like real time this and see like how stuff splits apart and it's one of the weirdest vi- like i'm gonna make a youtube channel and we're gonna throw stuff off of it that reminds me of those like hydraulic press videos yeah where they just go slow motion and you see everything just explode from the pressure and it's wonderful it's wonderful it's soothing to watch it's it's, it's oddly satisfying right? is, is like the reddit <laughs> yeah and that and the hot knife videos yeah i love a hot knife <laughs> <laughs> but just like watching it just cut through everything yeah so smoothly yeah it's so fun it's so nice so back to <laughs> uh have you ever considered film or uh, like videotaping yourself or, or whatever yes 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 um i did i was very lucky that my my school had a very good on camera class, mm. um, which I got my reel from, from the footage from that class. But I don't know. I prefer live theater to film, I think I've discovered. Why? For me, as a performer, filming things out of order messes with me. Mm-hmm. So I like. I like when you're on stage doing the whole story at once, you can actually grow with it Mm -hmm. as opposed to, okay, now you're in this scene and I need you to get to this place. Right. Like if you film like... That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, if you film like a a climactic scene first, I'm like, we're jumping right into it. I haven't had time to... I haven't had time to understand... Take this journey, yeah. How we got here. Yeah. Right. I, I... I'm okay with that. I don't prefer it to live theater, mm. if that makes sense. No, I understand. Um, also, I'll do it like three times, and then I'll get bored and be done and not want to do more takes. I'm That's... like, no, I've done it. I'm not going to do right. anything. Please stop. So, so what is it like putting together a reel for like being an actor or uh, like getting headshots and stuff like that? Yes. Because that's, like, that's the thing you need to do. Yes, it is. Um. Headshots are, I want to say easier. Um, You just have to find a good photographer. And you need, well, that and you need to be able to curate your look. Yeah, and the outfits and all that. The outfits and all the changes. Um, I'm very fortunate because one of my friends in college, he was like, I think I want to start doing headshots. So the headshot I have now, he did for $60 for me in college because he was like. That's a great headshot too. Thank you. The, the one that I used? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was like, I'm figuring it out, so, you know, will you be my guinea pig? Like, I won't charge you a lot of money, and then we can just have an hour and mm-hmm. do whatever. I was like, absolutely. He's actually coming here to Lancaster to Creative Pursuits. Oh, yeah. In August to do headshots. And I was like, hey, Kyle, <laughs> want to give me new headshots? <laughs> and he was like, sure. So I'm going to get them redone by him because I like him. He's my friend. I trust him. Right, of course. Um, and that's that's another thing. You have to know the people you're doing dealing with yeah. because oh my gosh, you can get pretty much scammed though in a lot of cases. Yeah. You've gotta make sure that you know your photographer's work and their product and mm-hmm. you can be like, Okay, yes, I've seen your work. I like what you do. I see that you have a client base and consistently are able to provide and you this have good work. reviews. You have good reviews. <laughs> exactly. So I'm very fortunate to have a friend, Mm -hmm. a good friend who does headshots, which is nice for me. Um, Reels, usually, so you can pay people to do your reel. That's also very expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, I was very fortunate because in my on-camera class in college, at the end, we got a reel. Like, Mm. they assembled all of our clips and the editors that would edit our scenes in the class. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, they got paid to do it, well, but course, they got paid course. by the school. By the school, yeah. Yeah. It was free for you to get it. It was free for me to get it, which was really nice. And I'm still in the window where, because I was 22 when I got that reel, and I'm 25 now, so, like, I'm still in the window where I can use old. it. Old. <laughs> I am still old. I am an elder. Are you, is that, like, your... 
typecast, do you think? Old? Oh, I mean, because there's, like, the typecast that people yeah. get, like, uh, for some people, it's, like, mothers. Some people, it's, like, you know. Yeah. Is that kind of, what? what is your typecast? My typecast is either villain. Villain? Yes. You're the queen of the night. Yes. I'm very much, I'm very much a Dolores Umbridge, if you will. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, or, like, just, just crazy. Crazy is also one. The crazy cat lady. <laughs> Not necessarily. Like, like, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn crazy yes. cat lady. <laughs> cat lady, yes. Or, gen- generally, it is, I guess I can boil it down to, like, high-powered woman. Mm. And then put some stank on it. <laughs> Cruella de Vil, gotcha. Yeah, I have played her. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Dutch Apple did Descendants last year, oh, and I played her in Descendants. I haven't seen Descendants. It, I hadn't seen it till I did the musical. Fair enough. Yeah, it was fun. I really liked it. That's so cool that you get to be a, a, a bad girl, a bad, bad butt, bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's the most fun. It's yeah. The most fun. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, uh, I sometimes I feel bad for some of the people who, like, because well, there's the argument, right, that you shouldn't be typecast, but then there's also the argument, well, you should lean into it because that's how you're going to get your more more roles. more roles, right? Yeah. So where do you land on that argument? It's frustrating. Um, I also think casting directors have no imagination. Most of them do. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's a reason why people who play roles all look the same. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, there's, like, a genre look for, like, if you're going to cast, like... If you're going to cast a princess, it's got to be a skinny, beautiful, you know... Yeah, it's going to look like this. And more casting directors have started changing mm-hmm. that. More conscious people have been able to be like, no, we don't need the skinny, blonde, white girl to play Cinderella, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, so casting directors, I think, are starting to get better with that. Unless it's, like, specifically written into the script. Exactly. Right? There's periods of, like, yes. points where you're like, okay, this is what the character looks like. But I think it's getting better. Like, Beanie Feldstein playing Fanny Bryce on Broadway. I know not. You know not? <laughs> um, I know not. Beanie Feldstein the, is... The whoever is playing Ariel for the Disney movie. For the Disney movie, yes. Yes. I so can, I can relate to that one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so casting directors are starting to be, like, more open open yeah more conscious of like oh we just cast these people who look like this all the time and we right. shouldn't and we shouldn't because it's not written in the script it's that and yeah. there are you there's know more there's more people there's people princes come in all shapes and sizes exactly people look how people look there's have you seen queen marie internet <laughs> just like a general historical <laughs> figure <laughs> big lady yeah, and so I think they're becoming better. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, but I think casting is starting to change, That's good. which is nice. Yeah. And, like, having a type, it's nice to have old reliable. Mm. To be able to be like, this is what I know I can do. This is what I know I can do well. So I'll pull this out. Right. But it's also nice to be challenged. And to grow. And to grow and to be able right. to show, like, I can do more than just this. I am you more know? than just bad villain. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> I am more than just skinning dogs. And <laughs> I'm just more than skinning dogs and telling jokes. <laughs> I can cry. I can cry, I can it. cry. <laughs> yeah. I can give you emotion. I can, I can I, love. I can love. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a, a, in my opinion, it's a double-edged yeah. Yeah. Well, because I, I can see both sides of it. Because, like, you know, if you want, if you are, like, I'm the big burly dude, I'm probably, I'd probably be cast as, as like, a bodyguard or, or like, that security or, or the big buff dude or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, or uh, the intimidating figure or whatever. Yeah. And I'm cool with that, but I'd like to play other things. I was Shrek, for example. Okay, yeah. Um, which is that big, meany person that does everything wrong and you know it's track everyone yeah. knows who track is if you don't shame on you what are you doing what are you doing some <laughs> <Slack> some <your> <laughs> <laughs> but uh 
But um, yeah, I mean, it's good to lean into that and yeah. get into your roles. But then you got to, at some point, you should also try to expand. Yeah. And there, so there's, it is a double-edged sword. It's it's nice to lean into it, but I'm sure it's also nice to expand. Yes, it right? is. Because I was also the jester in Once Upon a Mattress, and and the jester mm. isn't typically a big, yeah, a big bumbling fool like I am. <laughs> but but I was a big bumbling fool for them. Yeah. For that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you are a Christian. Yes. What is it like to be a Christian in uh, the theater world? Personally, for me, I don't think, like, it informs my life and my experience. Mm. But I don't think it very greatly affects my ability to perform, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Like, my performance. It's one of those things where... And I think it's also something very personal to me. Gotcha. Yeah, it's something that I keep more, like, my faith is more, like, if somebody asks me, of course, I'll talk about it. Right. But it's more of a personal thing for me. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, because I'm, I was curious, because I know some some uh, people will be like, well, if the show doesn't have a redemptive arc in it, I'm not going to be a do part it. of it. Yeah, I know there's a lot of, I, I what word do I want to use? I guess I'm more... Open? Open, relaxed, you know? I don't take more of a hardline stance. I more think, liberal? With the, yeah, with more the, liberal. Yeah. yeah, because I I think most stories, even if they don't have a redemption arc, have There's something in there. Something in there. Something beneficial to be told. Right. Something that can be learned or if not, something that can be enjoyed. You know? I think... There's a moral to every story. Is that what you're saying? I think you can... Yeah, you can find a moral in every yeah. story. And... Even if a story, like, even if it's not like, oh, you know, at the end of the day, here's our lesson, you can walk away being like, with something. With something. Yeah. Everybody, every audience member, I think, no matter what production it is, walks away with something. Mm. Unless it's just a really bad production. <laughs> <laughs> a really bad um, production. That's funny. Yeah. Like, you can, like, people can do bad theater this is absolutely 100 percent true yeah. even broadway does bad theater like yeah. cats and <laughs> listen <laughs> one of my first live theater experiences was cats and they were in the audience and i was terrified of those people in cat costumes just walking next to me i am still traumatized Forget the movie <laughs> i want to see the original release of that movie where they didn't finish the CGI, so they had just human hands and feet. I want to see that cut. I'm so upset I didn't get to the theaters soon enough. Wait, what? Yeah, they released that first cut with, like, not... What? The CGI wasn't finished. Yeah, and then they re-released to... Th like, they sent a new version out to theaters with the CGI, no quote-unquote, fixed. Yeah. You, you know what I want to see? What? I want to see the original Sonic movie with... Old <gasps> with that that terrifying design, yeah. that song like I love that through enough social media backlash through from bullying. fans through pure bullying, pure, 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 pure bullying, they the changed studio. his design. I think that is, and they the and power they, of the people, the power <laughs> of the people, and the power of peer pressure. The power of peer pressure in a good way, in a good yeah. use. This was this was a this justified. Was this was justified. Yeah, <laughs> this was a justified bullying <laughs> to get that Sonic fixed. Right, and oh my gosh, has it been so successful for them too? Now that they made a second one, I don't yeah. know if you saw that one. I didn't see that. I one. haven't seen it yet. I plan to. Okay. Because Tails is in it, and oh. I I personally love Tails much more than I love Sonic. Sonic. Yeah. Okay. Um, because I I'm a gigantic Sega nerd. Um, okay. And I love I loved all the Sonic games as a kid. So I, I was really excited when I saw Knuckles and like Dr. Eggman as as Ashley Doctor and Jim Carrey. What a casting! Jim Carrey is one of my favorite performers, and I hated his work growing up. Really? Yes. Um, liar, I, liar! I love that. Though. I know. Well, 
Bruce I don't know. Almighty? Are you kidding me? I did like Bruce Almighty. Okay. I loved Bruce good. Almighty. Bruce Almighty. I feel like you have to like Bruce you Almighty. You have to. It's such a good. It's so, it's so the good. Comedy, the comedy. Yeah. The concept. The concept is phenomenal. But I saw an, inter- an interview with him recently where he was talking about how he suffered with depression. And he mm. talked about the character of being Jim Carrey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I res- like I gained so much respect for him in that. He was like, everybody expected something he, from me. He could have been a Robin Williams. Yeah. And gone down that, that path. Route. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, I ended up not having a sense of like self. Because mm. I was playing Jim Carrey. I wasn't Jim Carrey. Wow. Yeah. And I, like, in that interview, I was like, I respect you so much. I I had a big turnaround with how I felt about his work. In really? That. Yeah. Uh, I've always loved his work. He, the, the, the Grinch. <laughs> oh, The Grinch is, that's, cine, that's a cinematic <laughs> masterpiece. That's not a movie. That's film. That's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> okay. If anyone who says different, you're wrong. You're wrong. Okay. That. Apparently, I was. Oh, well, have you seen the new Stranger Things season? I'm. You're not, not a Stranger going, Things person. I, well, I, I, I don't really care. Actually, here's controversial opinion. Okay. I like spoilers because okay. I like figuring out how it happens. Okay. Because okay. well, if I know something happens, I'm like, okay, how does it get Let's there? Let's watch it. Yeah. How, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> for Stranger Things season four. Um, so they're big bad. Um. Vecna. It's not the guitar, dude. <laughs> it's not. I love Eddie Munson. I love him so much. Spoilers. When they killed him, I wept. Oh, no! <laughs> I wept in my bedroom. I wanted him around for next season. Oh, yeah, that's right. All, in the fifth season, is the last season, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the last one. Um, But they're big bad. He has all of these prosthetics, like makeup. Mm. And he, I think it's six hours he it takes for them to do his makeup and i was reading this just like brief little article about actors and their makeup and like actors who quit series or things because Because of the makeup process process. and i know jim carrey was trained by someone from the military or the army like a a torture expert Oh. On how to sit there and endure being put in that Grinch makeup for all oh, those hours. No. Yeah. Wow, that's inc- oh, well, I, you know Dave Bautista? Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's in Marvel. Uh, he's Drax in Marvel. Okay, yes, yes. Um, at that, all that makeup, because that's all makeup, by the way, not okay. just CGI. Not just... But that, that, took, that takes five hours Ooh. to have to sit there. And he's like a WWE, or he used to do, do, he used to do, do WWE. WWE. So he knows all the process, but even he was like, <sighs> "This is a lot. This is a lot." Yeah, to just sit sit there, there and and the f- first off, what if you're ticklish? True, true, true. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like you're like getting all these paint brushes all over you, and and having like all the, I can't wear nothing less than a hundred percent cotton. Okay. Uh, my skin will not handle it well. Okay. Um and like I have to like wash shirts before I put them on because like when I first buy them. Yeah. Uh or else I will feel very uncomfortable. Okay. And so I can't imagine what it's like to stand there in these uncomfortable suits first off cuz the suits they wear are uncom- are yeah. uncomfortable. They're limiting. Yeah. Some of them are plastic, right? Yeah. Like f- for Val- Valkyrie, uh that actress, uh she has to, all of her stuff is pa- plastic. And it forces, and something I didn't know, but a, a lot of the superhero uh, suits, they force you to have proper posture. Because of how tight they, like the build? Well, no, on purpose, because that's how a superhero looks. Oh, so they build it so you they can't relax. They built it in, yeah. That sucks. Right. I want to slouch. I, I wanted to see Captain America just relax. My <laughs> superhero slouch. Hashtag not my captain. <laughs> <laughs> I never slouch. True American slouch. True, true, that's, that's completely true. Actually. You're a false American if you have good posture. Yeah, you're not a real American. Slouch like the rest of us. Slouch like you're, have bad posture like everyone and else here. Yeah. You eat well? How dare How- you? Dare McDonald's you. McDonald's and Burger King all the way. 
I will say Italian McDonald's, so much better than American McDonald's. I'm sure. They have chicken wings. You could get a bucket, and the options to put in the bucket were like nuggets, Burgers. tenders, <laughs> popcorn chicken, and chicken wings. Pot, so it, it's a Kentucky Fried Chicken the McDonald's. Yeah. They like, there was the normal menu, and then I... At the <laughs> Here's Flor- the European menu. Yeah, well, at the Florence, this was at the Florence train station. So, like, there's like, you know, the normal, like the croissant and the blah, blah, on like this menu, and then I looked to my left and was like, fill this bucket with this chicken. And I was like... I oh. people don't understand how much I would pay for a bucket of <laughs> <McDonald's> chicken. chicken. <laughs> I was it was too early in the morning. Otherwise, I was like, I have to try the chicken because my thing was like, I want to go to McDonald's in Italy because I want to see the difference. And I'm sure the size differences are. It's actually not that different. Like the fries uh-huh. and the drinks are different, but like a burger looks like a burger. I thought they were, even those were smaller. Than- not. As far as I can remember. Hmm. But like. I know their plates are smaller over there. Yes. And for smaller portions. Mm -hmm. Which I thought was wild. But also. So I ate so much food in Italy. So much food. And I lost so much weight. (laughs) I know. I know. And that's the thing about America. Like I saw this meme recently. It was like you could eat trash in, in like Europe and whatever in and you can like smoke and whatever, and you're healthy. Yeah. Over in America, you you breathe the air, you drink the water, and you sleep for ten hours, and you're unhealthy healthy. and tired. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know what it is, but like there'd be nights where we would go, and like the only place open in town that late was this place called In Chips, and you would just go get this like paper cone, this huge paper cone filled with fried food, and you could pick what fried food went in it. So we would get like polenta and chicken tenders and French fries, and then they had like, like fourteen different sauces you could pick from, oh and we just walk around eating these cones of fried food, and we just all lost weight, or we'd get like we'd order pizzas and we'd eat pizza, just pizzas, and we lost weight, or I'd get falafel just delivered to the to the villa, and I lost weight. You know what it is? You know what? It, what? <laughs> it's uh, and this is this is. Might get a little conspiratorial. Okay. But, but I mean, well, it's the truth that, that Americans love our sugary food. We do. Right? And yeah. we love everything sweet and over oversaturated. And uh, it's we, we like our fructose syrup. Yes, Right? We do. And that's what kills. Because isn't it high fructose corn syrup creates fat deposits you can't burn off? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Something like that. But if you looked at everything, and they name it different things all the time, it's it's... High fructose syrup. It's corn syrup. That's what. That's also. Uh, it's just. Uh, and it's in everything. It's on all the drinks, and it's in all yeah. the food, and it makes. And I've I've slowly realized this, but it makes it's sticky sticky stuff in your mouth. It makes it. It makes it feel your mouth makes sticky. Sticky. Okay. Uh, um. Well, because that's that's how I, that's how I know. And so if I've had it. lemonade with with high fructose syrup, you have that. It's the stickiness and the ba- yeah. and the only drink that I like, only uh, soda that I like is Sprite, and okay. I I just I don't know why, but I just love Sprite. Um, but it has the it, it has the high fructose syrup in it, and you can feel it whenever because uh, as a singer or uh, you can feel like the stickiness. Yeah. That the residue that's left Go over behind. when you when you when you drink it, but it, when you have like lemonade and stuff like that, it's not there. Yeah. Like actual for real, real lemonade. lemonade. And yeah. it's like I I'm started switching and I. I found this TikTok. <laughs> you love a TikTok. I, I love a TikTok, and uh, it told told me how to make Sprite without the without the Sprite. <laughs> without, Sprite without the Sprite. Well, okay. you, you know, like yeah. effectively the same thing. It's like zesting uh, lemons and lime, and like a- adding you know whatever sugars, just not high fructose okay. syrup. Yeah. And I'm gonna start doing that, and because it, it, apparently it tastes more like Sprite than Sprite does. But that's terrible. Not like not like that. You have a good alternative, but like the fact that like. Sprite doesn't even taste like Sprite. Well, sometimes it doesn't because uh, yeah. it's, it's just so syrupy or there's not enough syrup in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's and it's crazy how unhealthy, like, the, you know, like, we can get into arguments about the FDA and, like, all of the, the money going into there mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it's true. 
the yeah. Euro- European stuff is way healthier. Yeah, the food regulations are different. Are way different, and yeah. they're so strict because they, not not the, well, I'll, maybe they care about the people. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. Perhaps that's what it is. But but I mean that's what it seems like because yeah. it, it's it is so. Granted, the food over here is delicious. Correct. But it's so unhealthy for you. Yeah. And I I don't think have you seen uh the super size me? Yes. About McDonald's. Terrifying. Terrifying. I didn't know that you could supersize things over in the past. But, I, yeah. But they had to get rid, rid of, of it, it because because of, him. because of him and and the health effects it had on him. If you haven't seen that documentary, it's a documentary on uh, this guy. Uh, in the past, you could go to McDonald's and and say "supersize me," mm-hmm. and they would give you like an extra, extra large of everything. And and what I mean, you, when you see your largest now, that's nothing compared it's to the extra, size. extra large. Yeah, it's so big. It's so big, and and it's it's it, they, he did this documentary of where he only ate that McDonald's. Yeah, only ate McDonald's, and and all the health and. All the research that they did into the food and how it makes you feel, yeah, how, how it makes you feel more hungry in some cases, and how it makes you sad, it yeah, makes, makes you, you sad, makes you want to go get more, yeah, it's like a drug almost, and and this is all based off that documentary. I'm not, yeah, I'm and he had to like change the rules that he was functioning under yeah. to where he wouldn't ask to be supersized. He would only supersize if they asked him, "Would you yes. like to super?" Because it was doing so much. Bad. Stuff doing, to him. Yeah, he he went into this thinking that he could do it. Yeah, and be where, fine. where he would he would ask them to supersize, but it it got so bad where he changed the rules on it. Yeah, because he was feeling so bad that they would only he would only supersize if they asked him. Mm, yeah, and that was a lot of the time. Still, yeah, still, and like the doctor he saw before he started the whole thing was like, I don't think you'll see any negative side effects to doing this. I think you'll be right. fine. And I was like. A medical professional thinks you'll be fine, but they just didn't know. They just did not know. And Until he did it. And it's crazy how, like, here's some of the stuff that makes me upset. Okay. Um, If you look at a chicken from the 1940s. Yes. Compared to a chicken today. Yes. You can just understand. And people will be like, well, it's breeding. No. <laughs> You're wrong. You're incorrect. It, they, they, I mean, in some ways, you're right. Yeah, they yeah. made they made a chicken, um, unnaturally fat, unnat, un, unnaturally big. Yeah, fed with all this junk. The reason to why make it fat. I didn't know this, but apparently, chicken tastes way worse than it. Like, if you have like a natural chicken, and I'm talking like a thing that can actually walk on two legs. <laughs> <laughs> and it can actually like run. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know that's what chickens used to be. Yeah. Instead of these big, fat, waddling, tortured creatures filled with disease. Yeah. In some cases, um, apparently that chicken tastes way, way better, better. than it does now. Ugh. Yeah, because they just feed it with so much crap. crap. Yeah. That. Ugh. Stuff like that that yeah. makes me upset. Yeah. Because it's more, yeah. I want to know what a 1940s chicken tastes like. I want to know what a 1940s chicken tastes like, too. I want to know what I've been robbed of. I wonder if, I wonder if Italy chicken, did Italy chicken? I didn't have chicken a lot in Italy. I will say, when I came back from Italy, the thing I craved the most was a burger. And a salad. Let me tell you what. Really? I struggled so deeply finding salads when I was in Italy. And the one day I ordered salad, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I was like lettuce and carrots and a few tomatoes and then a weird dressing. And it could be that I just didn't it like the Caesar dressing. dressing was it? No. no. Italian dressing, maybe, I guess. No. It was like, it's closer to like what we Americans would have called a French. Mm. Like that orangey. The orangey. And I was just, I ate it. Because I wanted a vegetable so badly. But I missed, I missed burgers and I missed salads. Because also a lot of the vegetable, it's like there was a lot of eggplant and stuff. Mm. 
and I don't like eggplant. Mm. So a lot of times I'd be like, no veggie option for me. I don't like an aubergine. Thank you. I was about to say, did you know how they call it in other places? I don't enjoy an aubergine. Thank you. But yeah. And then I got a burger in Italy once and I was like. It's not the same. It's not the same. It tasted healthy. And that's not what I'm looking for. That's not what I wanted. I wanted a greasy you know, burger. I, I haven't been able to eat out for a while because mm-hmm. uh, money. Yeah. Um, and But recently I, I, I got a paycheck and I was like, I'm going to get a Burger King. I don't care. Yes. I'm going to get a Baconator. Yes. I'm going to enjoy that. Yes. And then I'm going to be sad that I can't enjoy it for, for another long period another of long time. Period of time. It's, sometimes you just need it. It's comfort food. I it's mean, that's what, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what the documentary was. It was more about being comfort food than, than being food. Yeah. Food it's food. Not, it's not food food. <laughs> it's comfort food. It's for food. when you're sad. It's for when you're sad, and it makes you feel better. And yeah. Then it makes you sad again later. That's true. Um, So it's a, it's a never-ending cycle. Of just being sad. But hey, their fries are good. Their fries are very McDonald's good. fries, at least. McDonald's and fries are good. Here's something cool I didn't know about McDonald's. Something cool, but also weird. Um, They... They're, they're, the reason why their Sprite tastes so good is because they make the straws wider. And so they oh. allow more of the carbonation to come through, which yeah. which spices it up. makes it, makes it that Spices actually, it what, up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Yeah, it, yeah. Because yeah. like, the Sprite at McDonald's tastes wildly different than any other Sprite, right? Yeah. And it's because of those enlarged straws that allow the uh, more carbonation and more, more of that stuff, more of the spice. The stuff. The spice. I haven't had through. McDonald's in so long, and I'm going to go to McDonald's after this. <laughs> now I'm just hungry. Yeah, right. Well, um, we're kind of ending out the show, so oh. I'll, I'll let you get uh, I'll let you get over there to McDonald's. Um, to McDonald's yes. and uh, be healthy, kids. Yes, please don't do what I'm doing. No, uh, when I when I raise my children, we're not going to McDonald's. We're not going yeah. to Burger King. We're not doing none of that. We're eating PB and J's. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're have, Tuna, tuna. People are gonna say I'm disgusting for this, but I love tuna mac and cheese. Okay. Okay. I won't okay, yuck anyone's enough. yum. Um. Well, that, that was like that was that was the struggle meal for me. We would have Miracle Whip, stir, stir that up with the mac and cheese, okay. put tuna in there, and uh, bacon bits. Ooh. Okay. And people trash on me because they're like, tuna soda. No, you've been brainwashed. <laughs> yeah, no, enjoy the tuna. Enjoy the tuna. But um, uh, that's something I'm gonna keep strict on my kids. Like, listen, you're not gonna have soda because it's addicting. It's yeah, it's a pro- like growing up. I didn't, I don't like the way carbonation makes mm. my nose feel, so I don't really drink soda anyway. The only soda I will really ever get is like a root beer when I a want. Root beer. I want to drink with a little taste as opposed to my water. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But I'm the same way. But because I, it's not healthy. It's not. It's not good for you. And it's and when you're a kid, yeah, you can just you can burn you that off go. no problem. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's not going to affect you as a kid. Yeah. As much. It just. But it'll carry on into your adult life, and that's where it's going to mess you up, and that's where you're going to get really big yeah. and unhealthy. And it's going to form negative habits. Negative habits, exactly. Yeah. And you're not going to. I'm going to be sure because that something my parents didn't really quite. Uh, and it was more of a money problem than anything. But I, I feel like they didn't feed me enough uh, vegetables because that's I didn't know that. But that's where your taste buds like start. Really? If, yeah. If you're being fed vegetables or something early on, that'll grow up into your adult life. And so, yeah. So I love green beans because I always got green, green beans. beans. I I don't like bananas as much because I never really got bananas. I okay. love grapes because I used to eat grapes all, all the time. time. I am so like picky about grapes. I need a grape with good surface tension. I agree. Yeah, I, I can't a have a mushy sour grape. Grape as well. Yeah. Green grapes, I love them. Green grapes are good. Purple grapes, not a big fan. It depends. It depends. Okay. It depends. Because if if it's sweet enough, then it's okay. Yeah, but if but, it's but mediocre, it's also, if it's mediocre, it's like why would I even bother? Right? Like, why do I want a mediocre grape? <laughs> Up no. here talking from an ivory tower. <laughs> I don't want a mediocre grape. Oh, you down there with your mediocre grapes. You and your mushies. <laughs> you can eat your mushy, semi-sweet grapes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what are, what is something that you wish you knew now? That you wish you had known when you first started your career? Ooh. Stand up for yourself and ask for what you want. Mm. 
Yeah. I feel like I still have this problem. I'm very much a yes person, even if it overwhelms me or if it's too much or I don't want to do it. Yeah. And I wish I had been able to say no or say yes, but. Yes, but. Yeah, that's also important. Yeah, things like that. Being able to really be like assertive sticking up for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish I had been. And like being afraid of saying no to opportunities and then not getting opportunities again. Yeah. I wish I had been able to be more assertive with what I need in my and just how I'm treated. Yeah. Yeah. So what is uh would you say that's maybe one of your biggest mistakes that you've made or you've seen made? Yeah, I feel like and it's something I'm starting to work on now too, as I'm getting older. But you know, the theater is a business and mm-hmm. contracts are contracts. And you need to know what you're worth. Yeah. And, you know, you you should never feel bad asking for what you're worth. Now, you should be able to negotiate with, depending on how much someone can pay you. Yes. But also don't let people take advantage of you. Yeah. So you should be able to. And, you know, the worst somebody can say is no. So you should, you know, it's a business, know your worth, and negotiate. And move on when it's time. Yes. Yeah. That's something That's I've big learned. That's big, too. Got to move on when it's, when it's time to move on. Yeah. You can't feel stuck. What is something, some advice you would, uh, other than that, what is some advice you would give to starting or aspiring actors, actresses? Do it all. Not just acting. Do it all. Do costumes. Do stage crew somehow. Because those skills, number one, if you can't get work as an actor, you'll still be working in the theater for a contract. And because it's so beneficial as an actor to have those skills and be able to connect, connect, like being able to understand a stage manager and their position and their job. And their stress levels. And their stress levels. And then being able to help mitigate that. And help them as well. Yeah, they're going to want to work with you again. Mm-hmm. And like a costumer, like if you're, if something rips and you know the costumer is not in until your day off on Monday, you can fix, fix, fix it. it by yourself. You can fix it by yourself. You don't have to be stuck. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's less work on the costumers. But now, not, I wouldn't recommend doing that everywhere. Right. And for everything, <laughs> learn like, your place. Yes. <laughs> le- know your place is yes. also a big one. But like, if a button pops off your shirt. You can fix that. You can fix that. Like if your pants split, that's different. Diff- yeah, if you got a whole rip like I do in my jeans, yeah. you don't. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's new. knowing your Wait. place and knowing how you can help. And also understanding everything. Yes. Because also with certain companies, that's they want an actor who has other skills. Mm-hmm. Like at the Dutch Apple. They have a stage manager, but the actors are also, they move the sets. They do the role drops while mm-hmm. they're off stage. So being able to have those skills makes your job easier and gets and you hired you get more. Gets hired more, yeah. Yeah. Because you don't have to do that training anymore. Exactly. You know what you're doing. So with all that said, yes, this has been a wonderful time. If yeah, you want to find out time. more, yeah, if you want to find out more about Alyssa, please check out her website. Uh, it's AlyssaCrookTalent.com. And your Instagram? Underscore Alyssa Crook underscore. Do you have a TikTok? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe you'll find it. Maybe you'll find it if you dig enough. <laughs> With all that said, you can follow us on Facebook.com forward slash the story Corey Rosen. You can follow us on TikTok, the story podcast, I think it is. Um, you'll find us. Uh, you can find us on Instagram as well as underscore the underscore. No, sorry. It's the <laughs> underscore story <laughs> underscore podcast. I really got to find a better name for, for that one. Yeah. Because uh, the story podcast is all taken. Alyssa uh, Crook was taken. Right, I'm afraid. How <laughs> dare people take my ideas before me? Right. How dare they have the same name? How dare they have the same name? Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, on on uh, TikTok, we are just at the story podcast. There yeah. you'll find uh, different... Different stuff. We have our silly cues that we like to ask our, our guests afterwards that isn't on the show. Um, so you can find the stuff there in cool collages. What are they called? Compilations. Uh, compilations. <laughs> <laughs> Collage. <laughs> I don't know. 
Um, and if you want to support us, please do share. And if you really, really want to support us, please do visit our merchandise and get a sticker with the logo on it and our shirts, shirts and hoodies. I gotta be careful with my sl- with my <laughs> slang of words. words. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, check out our hoodies and our shirts. There, they have the logo on the front and the first fifty guests, including Miss Alyssa Crook, on yeah. the back. With all that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. We will be back shortly, uh, in like thirty minutes, with a new guest called Kieran K. Benton. He is a cool drummer, and I hope you guys I hope you guys stay tuned for that. With all that said. I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.